Hello, we're already back again with our Kylie Star Royal. I already played yesterday and I just felt like playing more today because why not? I feel like it would be fun. Hmm. So I'm just noticing. Wait, let me check that real quick. <sighs> For some reason, my go um, Twitch goals are not showing up again. Ah, now it is. Now it is probably working. I do hope the alerts will work as well. <laughs> <laughs> then it's just gotta keep refreshing until it decides for itself to just work. Which it sadly doesn't do that often mm. lately. Anyway. Um Yeah, you already can see a crown on screen. Um I went a bit crazy on leveling her up um off screen already. She's only out for two days, and I didn't pre-farm for her, and already got her mostly up to <sighs> whatever I can live to max. <laughs> 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 I kind of just really want to use her, because I feel like she could be a lot of fun. Hmm. But yeah, stick and improve her. Also, the relics are sub. <laughs> no, no, not the best, but I also already got the new one from like World 9 or something like that. Mm. Because I feel like they're. Um, yeah, they are like the <laughs> best in slot because. Agron really benefits of having <laughs> nihility characters in your party and the other buffs just like buffs her damage whenever there's or other characters of the same path um, on your soul. It just synergizes, synergizes really well. And yeah, I updated my dot party uh, accordingly. <laughs> <laughs> um. But what we can do first for today? Let's do like Bernardopoli again. <laughs> like I like kind of like this uh, little mini game mode. Um. Also, some of my friends already are like three millions. Let's try to beat that. Mm -mm 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 Wait. Seems to be gone now. Let's start. Okay, it's just an extra stage. It just really confused me. I feel like preferably you want to lower all this. Or not. You want to higher all this. Getting a lot of funds, I do like that. <laughs> of course, there's a one among it. Yeah, no, it doesn't even really matter. And we get a board encounter. Here are men dealing through the towering bookshelves of the Brimal Walking Library. You wonder the ales and chance upon the Ionic Research Shelf. Just as you are about to pull out a dusty, hard level book, you are a gentle whisper within earshot. Every rosewood works are notorious for their obscurity. The old family head Sunday faintly smiles at you. Perhaps you need more elaboration. Hmm. 
Yeah, sure, why not? Since stone goes to an account is complete until you hit like the best option, let's just really roll on until we do. Come on. We just immediately want to go for the next one as well. Come on, why not? Oh, it didn't count as complete this time around. You're taking a break at a reverie. In reality, when you hear muted knocks at your door, you answer it and see the Tectron Drifter standing outside. After an extended moment of what seems like a profound mental philosophical struggle, she finally speaks. I make sure you lost again. Mm, obtain land revenue? Yep, sure, let's lead the way. Obtain it 30 times. Sweet. And you get a super lane. You already hit like one and a half million. I feel like you can easily beat <laughs> my friend list. You're window shopping along the glitzy side of OT Mall when you noticed a uh, Halloween girl scurrying by. She's wrapped tightly like a mummy, wearing shades and a face mask, and she suddenly stops and locks eyes with you. Happy time, Momo. It's the cosmic singer, Robin. My bodyguards are out looking for me. I still want to stay outside a little longer. I need to wait to help Robin escape from the change into Urban's camouflage outfit. Just need to wait to help her, I guess. And more funds. I will take it. Hmm. Sweet. In Paniconi, you met a few players of Ethereum Wars. You noticed the players were all wearing a 20 keychain with the star one under Silver Wolf in insignia. It seems like she has quite a reputation among the players and has garnered a few fans. As you get closer, you hear them whispering. I can't believe the wolf lost in the Ethereum Wars. Who is this star Give me a land revenue. Give me Max again. Come on. Hey there, Monster Toto. I'm not sure why I'm enjoying this event so much. <laughs> also. something da, 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 oh, come on switch uh, 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 uh. da, 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 da. Okay, just had to take something. Um, yep, let's push this up.
are this uh, Rosemary one. Come on. Eh. Copy Rose. Alright, you run into Black Swan at the exquisite Eventide Ball. She's seated among the audience, coldly eyeing the crowd, dancing their hearts out on the floor. But just as you enter the line of sight, her pupils obviously twitch. I didn't think you'd be interested in the Blue Hours Entertainment. She smiles. I'm a little bored. Care to play a little game with me? She holds out a deck of cards, inviting you to pick one. Hmm. I'm gonna take the funds. Easy. Hmm. Was the right music scores? I'm sure Himiko maybe. Best song right to write the lyrics. Oh, big down. Hmm. Desperate screws doing this for assignment. <laughs> okay, it didn't really matter what I roll uh, anyway. Um. I noticed the stranger is stuck in one of Dr. Edward's dreamscapes. Is unable to end his own dreamscape? You will. I didn't do stream and say stop dreaming. City compulsion to help others. Hmm. This question of the death will even help. In the Pentagon in Dreamscape, you encounter a scene where a gang of family members of suspicious origin are harassing a dream chaser, saying that they have to pay their protection fee or lose the protection. You want to intervene, but the dream chaser stops you. You are just passing by. Um. I really will tell you encounter someone who wishes to invite you into some embrace reality association. They regularly regularly organize home like everyone to think about it. Okay. Embrace reality associations. Also sounds weird. Uh sounds sketchy. Many have come to the Golden Hour for the first time, and some will even ask you for directions. You fear? You ask the right person? Alright. Wait, are we back on Hulu's? Yeah, we are back on Hulu's PlayStation. The connection passages linking her to space station zone are narrow, and running into other people when turning a corner may occasionally occur. Your robotic voice going, I'm going to be late. I'm going to be late. And then... And are then knocked to the ground by cooking genius number 123. When you gain your senses, it's already gone. Hmm... This is not gonna get away with this. Yeah, okay. <laughs> now that's the thing I can like retread tires I've already got. And it would be bad if I do. Huh. Luckily I don't. Pepe is an official employee contracted to the space station. You can regularly hear its emotionally audible yawns. So today, Alan is up to his eyeballs with work and hopes that you can take Pepe along to supervise the space station's bottom tier workers. Unfortunately, the second you leave the master control zone, Pepe scampers off in a hurry and you. <laughs> 
<laughs> I wouldn't trust in it. Petite delight. Uh, yep, I'm gonna take that instead. Mm -mm -mm. Any tighter wanna hit you soon? Not really. I'm getting so many board encounters. There we see is a academic representative, Dr. Ratio, is the working epitome of a people displacer. Everyone's first impression is focused on his creepy head covering that radiates a wipe of any Buffy. Maybe you can also try getting a plaster cast head of your own. Uh, no, I don't want it. Yeah, I just already was wondering why uh, the die was grayed out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sweet. purchase it. So how many tiles do I need for this? And with that I've done everything I can do today. I just pick up these rewards too. Especially since they upgrade materials for like Iron. Ah, uh, just barely beat out by Anastasia. <laughs> Sad. <laughs> Alright. Let's actually continue with story now since we have like done this little event stuff. Um Which do we want to start with? Do we like go with the Trailblazers pair for Aventurine's one? Mm. Okay, the Trailblazers pair actually is not like doesn't look uh, like it has any progress at the moment. Let's go with Aventurine. I'm actually wondering uh, what path is eventually in preservation. Mm -hmm. Let's see, what kind of party can we build around eventually? In? I'm guessing we will have to fight with them. And hey, there, Moon. Welcome to the chat. Um, what are you guys? I can't. I can't watch this info, really? That's annoying. Mm. Let's just go with an imaginary party, I guess. Yet another journey with you. Mm hmm. <laughs> And I got new birds to find, of course. <laughs> right. It keeps reminding me of do do do. I'm not sure why it's triggering me so much every time I hear it from the birds. Of 
business. No entry. Well, we have business here, so. I was requested by Mr. Sunday to bring him the suspect. My name is Ratio. He should have mentioned it to you. Oh, I remember you. Veritas Ratio. Your punch virtual particle clock is impressive. Excuse me? Uh, the one on your head. Of course, it's nothing compared to my full pocket dimensional annihilating power armor of the Mobile Knights. Right, and as I mentioned, that fantasy raiment of yours doesn't exist. Oh. That's because you can't see it. Like I say, only family can see the glory of the Mobile Knights. Ugh, enough, get going. Don't keep Mr. Sunday waiting. <sighs> it seems like the idiocy index here is no better than it is out there. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Ratio. Are surrounded by idiots. Oh, I want to look at his chest for this. The door is shut tight. Looks like we're on our own. I mean, there isn't a door. How did you get in before? For security reasons, the family built the administrative site deep in the dreamscape, with the mechanisms hidden in these Nightingale statues. The direction of the statues can be controlled. On the previous occasion, an attendant named Kona had gone to the side room to verify something before setting the statues in the correct positions. Well, maybe we should do the same. Let's go and take a look. Of course, we can also use brute force. Mm. Wait, I almost forgot about a chest. <laughs> Give me that. <laughs> this is hardly enough for a seat at the table. Also, it's weird that all of these birds have like... Ah! I already thought it was looking like sus. The question is, does it want me to turn them to, uh, towards the hall, or which orientations are they supposed to have? Solving a problem by brute force doesn't prove your intelligence. The side room. Don't let me repeat myself. Oh wait, this is actually connected to the story. <laughs> <laughs> yes, okay. I didn't really pay it that much attention. <laughs> uh, okay, we gotta do some karate shenanigans again. Mm -hmm. Just seeing what must be the most appropriate path. I can't even control him. Ah, but I can actually like check his abilities now. Um, okay, this one I don't show no, he Reds all as a fortified wager shield. Okay, stackable shield. Interesting. 
I'm gonna have blind bad points and reflects unnerved on a single enemy. It's an unnerved enemy. The crit damage. Ooh, okay. Buffing crit damage. At any single enemy for the which should have effect was give some hmm, I can attack. Manage energy as fuck, but she can resist crowd control debuffs. Alright. And it consumes them and does follow up attack. Against one of the three death pool. Okay. So he's. He has an interesting kit. Like, sporting follow up attacks while also like buffing crit damage and giving shields. Quite versatile, actually. The strength. Okay, we can use this ultimate. World cleansing dragon. Heaven search. Break. Let's can you find the answer? Oh no, I can actually like use this abilities now. you off. <laughs> I underestimated you. No dirty tricks. Receive divinity. Do not fret. What? Jed. Eternal step. Dead return! Did that hurt? I sent a storm. Heaven search. Rise! Sure, I'll play along. You chose the wrong enemy. Feeling spiffy? Heaven search. Break. Let's can you find the answer? Awaken dormant scales. World cleansing dragon. <laughs> Did I just taking a lot of hits? Uh -huh. The dice have been cast. Bust. Or maybe I'll take it off. Oh. I'll see you off. <laughs> Let's play for a while. The strength. Heaven search. Rise. Sweet. Fortune follows luck. Just like it always does. Are you getting like, uh, like a nice preview of like Avengerine's combat kit, which is quite cool. Dharma is doing nice AoE damage. Finally, good imaginary DPS. <laughs> I should have built him earlier. Ah. I'll see you off. 
The strength. Sure, I'll play along. Huh? You chose them. Huh? I don't even need to fight all of them. <laughs> oh, it's a bird. Six nightingales facing in different directions. An obvious hint. Mm. But are these nightingales? They are. What's wrong? How can nightingales be so huge? <laughs> they look more like torment eagles to me. There are no eagles in the five families. Only nightingales. <sighs> Why am I wasting time with you on this? <laughs> I should just quickly screenshot it in case I don't keep it. Ah, oh, okay. I actually do, but okay. Hmm. I'm gonna turn you clockwise. I'm gonna turn you clockwise. You tries. You stay and you get two trams. All right. <sighs> Just as I thought. Here's the correct answer. A truly miraculous discovery. Perhaps I should offer you the chance to join the Genius Society. For rent? <laughs> Why are you here for rent? And hey there, Yukimura. Really? <laughs> well, I thought you'd given up on that already. Mm. Since when have you become my landlord, though? I never... I don't remember ever signing a contract with you if you were, like, being my landlord or anything. So what are, like, your legal grounds on, like, demanding that? <laughs> I was being sarcastic. <laughs> Can't you tell? <sighs> Maybe. Oh, impressive. <laughs> well, so much for Mr. Sunday's reserved, virtuous image. Do you need me to remind you? We're in a dreamscape. No matter how grand the mansion looks, it'll not affect Penicone. Stop wasting your time nitpicking the family here. Yeah, you're right. The only way to destroy the family is death. <laughs> Sunday must have thought the same. Let's head down. <laughs> You have to work a bit harder to convince me. <laughs> Good luck with that. More of these puzzles. Um, um yep, meet it.
Do I have my echo wrong? I did pull for her, that's what I said. And I've already leveled her quite a bit. <laughs> so, yeah. It's all yours. <laughs> okay, once me to go down. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I was, was quite lucky with rolling for her. I got her in, like, my third tenth pull. I didn't even get Gallagher. <laughs> this could serve you well. I don't want to do any necessary fights. Oof. Yeah, I was quite lucky this time around. Ah, this is all like the birds for this area. Okay. There's another bird within the balloon. Ta -da. Is there anything up here? There is. Okay, why didn't it fit the first time around? There's a chest here, so let's get that first. And there's a... No. It sounded like there was a bird, but... Apparently not. Is this just an optional room? There's a picture of Robin over there. I don't feel like this is optional. <laughs> yeah, but not like the paper birds you're supposed to collect. Here may be an option room. There's also another Hano adventure up there. Of course, the puzzle piece is going somewhere. Hmm. 
There's a bird. Ah, come on. <laughs> True. Agaron can one shot our world enemies. <laughs> Which is quite nice for getting around annoying enemies. Uh, Robin's picture is not doing anything. All right. <laughs> and I would use Ekaram, but she doesn't work that well with the Trenchereen, I would say. Since she requires, like, nearly characters. No dirty tricks. I was just okay. Bust, or maybe I'll take it off. Watch your head. Eternal step. Dead return. Did that hurt? Don't. Mm. I don't have anyone to break these, which is annoying. Head your bets. Mm. The strength. Heaven search. Rise. Wait, no, I just gotta put him down. Ah. No dirty tricks on Eternal step. Dead return. <laughs> the strength. Just go down, please. Trying to pull a fast one. <laughs> the 
eternal sleep is not the end. The dead return! The dice have been cast. Bust. Or maybe I'll take it off. Watch your head. Awaken dormant scales. World cleansing dragon. <laughs> Maybe I should put in character to like break these apes because they are annoying with their armor. The strength, heaven search, break. Spend freely. What is it we're waiting for? Okay. <laughs> Receive divinity. Do not fret. Repay. This sounds like a lot. Construction physical, they to check on yellow hairband. Let's play. Can you find the answer? Mm. Wait, archives? <laughs> Maybe? <laughs> no, no, I don't think it will be white archives. I sent a storm. Heaven search. Rise. So you mean it will be some kind of crossover character or what? I never watched um, JoJo's Bizarre Adventures, so yeah. <laughs> no dirty tricks, all right. <laughs> Heaven search. Rise. Let's. Can you find the answer? Awaken dormant scales. World cleansing dragon. <laughs> you off I see <laughs> I'll go easy this time feeling spiffy I sent a storm heaven search break Well, I'm not that much of a meme guy, and I never watched JoJo, so... <laughs> yeah. Uh, wait, where am I supposed to go? Over there. Oh, wait. This is where I wanted to go, right? Hey there, extra. <laughs> oh well then just will like and we'll relax and watch along I guess. Um okay, what's this Hanoi Adventure about? Mm -hmm. Where's Tim? Okay. 
Uh, all right. But the uh, experience to calamity when Hanu gets his Hanu launcher. Okay. If I Hanu has no, you can Okay. We can launch rockets now. Okay, I'm getting to your tutorial after I've already done it. Interesting. Actually, can we exit access that room? Because we opened something up over there. Okay, no, it doesn't look like it. Okay, I can't pick it up yet. I guess I should have come here later. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, I didn't have to just teleport back out of here. <laughs> I'm guessing it's something story related. That's which was why I cannot pick it up yet. Hold on. Huh? What's wrong? Are we heading the wrong way? No, but this door is locked. My friend, did you really make an appointment with him? <laughs> it's a trial. You got to prove your worth. What fuck are you talking about? You can speak with him. If I'm not wrong, we need to find a way to open this door in the hall, or this place will be our prison. Oh, an escape room. <laughs> My favorite. Get serious. I've no time for games. Let's head back. The hint is probably in that prominent sandpit. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's an enormous sandpit. <laughs> I'd love to build a tall building for myself. Once I have enough savings. Yeah, it doesn't really feel like we're invited. There's a noticeable gap in the model. I believe you're right. There wasn't a gap before. That man must have done it intentionally. 
Well, with your brilliant mind, you shouldn't have any trouble recalling what was here last time. Right, Doctor? Of course. Let's look around. When I see it, I will know it. <laughs> Fine. Fine. Why do I feel that we're pursuing a degree in burglary now? Wait. Okay. I really should just, just wait out of that room. Oh, come on. Eternal sleep, the dead return! Did that hurt? You almost bit me? The strength. I'm usually not usually not using the talents during exploration, so I kind of for, always forget about them. I'll see you off. Because most of the time you just can just easily dodge the monsters anyway, <laughs> unless you have to wait for a door to open up. Let's play. Can you find the answer? I've never even touched my food. I have a lot in my inventory, but I never use it. <laughs> <laughs> I sent a storm. Heaven search. Rise. The consequences are mine to bear. I... I've never used any of these foods before. <laughs> Unless it was like at the beginning for like your uh, daily quest stuff to get like your weekly, uh, your daily points. Found it. This is it. Because they needed to use it to get some. Do you mean this box? It's just for the Hano adventure stuff here, so you so you can hide behind it from one of the enemies, which I didn't even need to make use of. Also, actually, I'm gonna switch up my party because I can break those. Um, those apes and those apes annoy me at the moment. Uh, so I'm just switching to you as my DPS instead. And now I can uh, interact with this. The nameplate reads Gulliver's Arch. <laughs> well, I'm amazed you can remember something this tiny. You know, this reminds me of a tunnel I once saw that could shrink people who passed through it. If I were you, I would shut my mouth. It's wise to remain silent when you should. You also can, like, see the Hanno uh, mess sign on the box, so it's just signaling that's, like, long to the little minigame. This reminds me of one of those building toys. You know, with the blocks. <laughs> I've never played with them before. I wonder if it's more interesting than stacking chips. 
In your case, I doubt it, Venturine. Oh, look. The gap is closed. And it fits perfectly. <laughs> so, what's next? Dit. <laughs> oh, good heavens. D did I drink? Am I still in a dream? Indeed. I like how Ratio is just towering oh, over there. Doctor, you're huge. It's me! Down here! In the, the sand pit! Oh, actually, I think we could make this work for us. Just find a way to slip me into Sunday's collar and I'll infiltrate the family just like that. <laughs> Good idea, actually. <laughs> oh, fine. I was just kidding. Let's find a way to open the door. Um. Mm-hmm. That dude definitely knows how to uh, walk. <laughs> There's a bird. Did you? More like air plus ratio. If you want to tea post and tea bros properly, come on. I'm industrious gum? Uh, sure. Any other birdies I can find here? Just enemies to you? And you're enjoying your life, I guess. I actually missed a treasure chest. I'm guessing he has to hate a big bird. <laughs> There's another big one. I don't think I can actually catch those though, do I? Oh no, there's probably like the ones I've already found because they're like sitting on top of that model. Puzzles. Hmm. 
There we go. I'm guessing they're enjoying themselves over there. Okay. Yeah, I'm back at the start. Alright. And see what I mean? It's like easy to just dodge around these monsters. here to guide you through the tour of the base model. Happy to be of service. Hmm. And tell me about the tour. Hello. Welcome to the Golden Hour base model. I am an oak soldier. I will be here to guide you through the tour of the base model. Just shut up. Model, happy to be of service. Generating guide. Please wait patient. This thing definitely is wrong. Found the nearest check-in spot. Please look behind me. A capsule, a uh, sheen model. Model, uh, 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 I didn't do a thing to it, Doc. You've got to be my witness. I saw nothing. Just <laughs> staring there. <laughs> Menacingly. A capsule machine. Oh, there's no mechanism on the floor. Could there be one at the top? Doctor, do me a favor. Also, why am I lagging so much right now? So, I was right. These models have interiors that look exactly like the real buildings. The only difference is that no one lives in them. Funny that Sunday puts a miniature that makes him seem like a giant by comparison, right where he can see it first thing in the morning. <laughs> Insecure much? <laughs> mm. Okay. For whatever reason, did the cutscene just cause <laughs> immense lags? Which was uh, weird, but okay. At least now uh, everything seems to be fine again. The 
Probably not more helpful when it comes to those apes. Do not concern yourself with the outcome. Oh, one of the fragments flew upstairs. I don't need to use the pinball machine to flick myself up there. But it's tough. Okay, this gets resumed to base. <laughs> oh, great. There's another pinball machine base here. And it's empty too. Doc! I'll need your brain power again. I don't feel so weird with having Dr. Ratio standing there just looking down at us. There's no need to yell, I can hear you. The pinball machine must be hidden somewhere in the hall. Like the arch. Wait here, and I'll be back in a minute. Wait, do we play as Ratio now? <sighs> Finally, a moment of peace. Wait, why did it swap to my dot party now? Uh. <laughs> I guess I would just leave it at a dog party. Mm. Let's just check this out. Uh, let's just check out this area. Ah. Let's make use of that. Pleasant moments of solitude are always fleeting. Can you? Oh, multiple birds. It wouldn't just annoying fighting all of those four enemies, so. Echo was really helpful there. <laughs> oh, you're back. Just place it here. Thank you. Okay, this cutting is making my game like this time around. So, weird. Thanks, Doc. Uh, okay. Yeet. Mm -hmm. Oh, Ratio, you should come in here and take a look. The view here is breathtaking. Honestly, you could easily squash me with just a pinch. If it really is, is your wish, I will do so without a moment's hesitation. Also, it feels like this is awakening some weird king in Venturine. Okay. 
Hold on. Piece of cake. Mm. Oh, I got two destinations for this. Let's take that all four first. Get out of my way, please. Chose the wrong enemy. <laughs> Tedious. Blade of moonlight. All will be revealed in lunar flame. <sighs> Hold on. Piece of cake. Mm hmm. Hidden bar? No, okay. This chair is actually a blocking me off. Okay, I can do anything with the bird right now. Maybe I have to go like to the higher floor. Okay, do I have to... Maybe I'll take it off. Watch your head. <laughs> Stand down. Huh. Blade of me. This will break you, my guys. the wrong enemy. Receive divinity. Save it for your own. Okay. Watch your head. Did that hurt? Hmm. Not sure what achievement is what, but okay. I take it. 
I'll see you off. <laughs> Tedious. Let's play for a while. Feeling spiffy? Sure, I'll play along. <laughs> Late of moonlight. Eternal sleep is the dead return. The dice have bust, or maybe I'll take it off. All in. <laughs> Ready for death. <laughs> I should just save to ultimate because it's like gonna be blocked anyway. Ah. <laughs> Watch your head. Did that hurt? Don't... Stand down. Blade. All will be revealed in the lunar flame. Blue. Save it for your own sake. Repay. your bets. Uh -huh. Come on, be down. Uh. Ready for death. Sure, I'll play along. Finally. Finally! Uh, all done. Piece of cake. So can I make check with the bird from up here or not? Nope. Okay, now do I get a bird down? There's a game mode where so I can properly investigate this. Terms can tell us making a trial that would perhaps even a little try. Sounds like coming from both have looking up is nothing but an empty billboard. Why can I not enact with this? Huh. I mean I can enact with it, but why is it like not letting me do anything? Kind of weird. Maybe I have to like. Can I get that when I'm out of here? I doubt that. I don't think I can even do anything about it from below here. Huh. Weird. Hmm. 
Let's go here. And the joyous tour of Toy City has come to an end. Hmm, makes me feel sad. Oh, Panacone isn't all bad, right? I'll use this interesting experience as a talking point at the poker table. I mean, it is uh, something curious at him, but... Eh. I wouldn't enjoy being like a miniature me, like a miniature version of myself. Can I make it with it from here? No, I can't. So I have to do it from inside, but how? How is this so stupid? You're right next to where you're supposed to be. Unless you have to forget you anyway. It's a pity you made it out of the sand pit alive. Sunday is just beyond this door. From my limited understanding, he's not someone easily handled. Are you prepared? Yeah, only I believe he's the one who should be prepared to face me. Tell <laughs> me about your plan. I don't have a plan. I'll just play it by ear. There are only two kinds of bargaining chips when dealing with people. Benefit or fear. Looks like sincerity isn't in your dictionary. Am I not sincere enough? <laughs> There's no need to emphasize it. We've got to make good use of death. That man's sister is dead. He won't be able to turn a blind eye, and that's fear. And I'll help him find the murderer. He can't do it due to his status and position, but I can. And that's benefit. On what basis do you believe he's incapable, necessitating the delegation to someone from a rival faction, the IPC? Simple. Because that murderer could very well be a traitor hiding inside the family. Could be, true. <laughs> um, do you mean the Galaxy Ranger whom you accused previously? She's not part of the family, though. Excuse, good doctor. There's something wrong with that woman. We need someone who can keep her in check. It's better to minimize the variables outside our control while we execute our plans. Moreover, I need to know her identity. If I'm lucky, <laughs> she could be an important pawn. And it's good to have more helpful friends when dealing with this matter. But honestly, the murder case is likely unrelated to her. I believe my standpoint. There's a rat in the family. Otherwise, why would Mr. Sunday arrange a private meeting with us? This isn't an interrogation, but a secret negotiation. We'll see. Using Robin's death as a bargaining chip, I'll win back my freedom and power. In the end, I'll ruin this beautiful dream and create the grandest death huh. the chance of winning is just beyond this door even if that chance is close to zero well <laughs> you can't win if you don't play right ah the charming audacity to think that you of all people might emerge victorious dear gambler Three chips are enough. All or nothing. And Jereen really is going all in on this one. It seems my puzzles are too effortless for you, IPC Ambassador. I appreciate your words. And I see you put a lot of effort into welcoming me, Mr. Sunday. However, this is no way to greet a guest. Well, this isn't an invitation. 
but a summoning. Before we speak, I need to test your character. I imagine this knowledgeable doctor friend of yours has been of great help, yes? Certainly. But you ought to know this better than I do. He has already faithfully fulfilled his duties, hasn't he? Yes, the doctor has assured me of your noble character. He considers you, like himself, a virtuous person who can be trusted by the family. I have come to know you very well as a person, Mr. Aventurine. You're diligent, generous, and willing to cooperate. The fact that you succeeded in overcoming many obstacles just to meet me gave me the reason to believe in your wisdom and courage. But there's one thing I must ask you. That is, you've used your wisdom at the wrong place to meet the wrong person and put yourself in a situation where you shouldn't be, witnessing a tragedy that shouldn't have happened. You don't look too well. Am I making you anxious? If not, then it means I'm on your side. If I wasn't mistaken, you'd just made a serious accusation against the family. You weren't mistaken, for depravity is crazy. Creeping in around you. There's no need for us to be evasive. Let's talk about your sister. Your sister's talent is unrivaled in the world of show business. As you know, her voice has been out of tune since she returned to Panacone. What's more disheartening, she can't sing anymore. Why is it putting death as a context for, like, she can't sing anymore? Just so to, so to say, like, uh, she's supposed to be dead or what? It kind of feels a bit weird because at this point we should, like, know what he's meaning to say with that. Who could be responsible for this? Many suspect the culprit is among the outsiders, but I know you hold a different opinion. Now your noble status has become a shackle, preventing you from apprehending the murderer and avenging your sister's death. You're feeling anxious because you're out on a limb. But don't worry. I'm on your side. I'm immensely honored by your concern for me, Mr. Aventurine. Since you're so selfless and generous, I believe you wouldn't ask for anything in return, would you? Well, naturally, you wouldn't incur any loss from this. I just want to reclaim what is mine. My liberty and the personal items under the family's custody, the bag of gift money, and... The box in which the cornerstone is stored. That's right. Cornerstone. I've heard it's a treasured asset of the strategic investment department. A sacred stone that seals the preservation emanator. Granting significant power, and every liquidation specialist holds one. Oh? For an object so precious, it probably comes at an even higher price than other forms of recompense. Well, I'm sure you're aware of the high level of risk I'll be undertaking to bring the truth to light. Mr. Aventurine, when you're out and about, do you always make adjustments to your appearance? Your tie should be on the center line. Your shirt must not protrude from your vest. Your trouser creases should be perfectly straight and always aligned with the tips of your shoes. What is that you talking about? Of course. But I don't, because it's not appropriate to do so in public. You should make sure everything is presentable and in order before leaving the house. I'm not the kind that takes risks. The cornerstone must be in the custody of the family. No room for negotiation. Please, don't let me turn you down twice. Sure, the gift money is good enough. I suppose you wouldn't mind that. After all, a merchant can't function without a bargaining chip. You compromised quicker than I thought. Unfortunately, it's a gambler that needs a bargaining chip. Not a merchant. I can give you your gift money. 
But before that, I want you to tell me. The fact that you can decisively forsake the box you asked for, what exactly is stored in it? <laughs> Triple-faced soul, please sear his tongue and palms with a hot iron, so that he will not be able to fabricate lies and make false vows. Oh. <laughs> what have you done? Under the light of the harmony, all wickedness is revealed. I implore them to shed their light, and I'll ask you questions on their behalf. Next. You have 113 seconds to prove your innocence and gain my trust. And if I refuse to answer? You can try. And we'll see if the Harmony rejects you. <laughs> Question. Do you own a cornerstone? Yes. What a simple answer. You, too, understand that idle chatter leads only to poverty. Did you hand over the cornerstone to the family when you entered Panacone? Yes. Does the cornerstone you handed over to the family belong to you? Yes. Is your cornerstone in this room right now? Yes. Is your memory free from any kind of tampering or deletion, encompassing but not restricted to the techniques of the Garden of Recollection? Yes. Are you an Avgin from Sigonia? Yes. You even know about that? Do the Avgins have any ability to read, tamper with, or manipulate one's own or another's mind? Hmm. No. Does it matter? Do you love your family more than yourself? Yes. All the Avgins were killed in a massacre. Am I right? No. Are you your clan's sole survivor? This is an interesting... <laughs> Dialogue. Perhaps. Do you hate and wish to destroy this world with your own hands? I don't know. Interesting. Now, the final question. Can you swear that at this very moment, the Aventurine Stone is safe and sound in this box. Hmm. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Looks like we can get an answer. Open it, Mr. Aventurine. It's your last chance to defend your honor. That is quite a curious ability Sunday has. And it is quite interesting, like all of like the specific things he was asking Aventurine. Quite curious. Please. <laughs> Are these what you're looking for? <laughs> System hours ago, do you light pavilion? Since you came as promised, learned doctor, does this mean that you are willing to take the side of the family in this farce? 
What makes you think you can convince me? I've heard you haven't enjoyed Mr. Aventurine's company. I also understand that you're an avid learner who sees the pursuit of knowledge above all. In that case, you ought to realize that a competent scholar knows their position and wouldn't forsake more vital matters for the sake of petty pride. If you agree to assist the family, I'll share our research findings on the Stellaron. You must be quite aware that, besides the family, no other faction is willing to share such information. Hmm. Cut to the chase. What do you need from me? I need Mr. Aventurine's comprehensive plan. Haven't you confiscated his cornerstone? You can't expect a featherless bird to take flight. But I've also heard the ten elites in the Strategic Investment Department have united, progressing together in the interests of the IPC. You'll have to speak more clearly than that. <sighs> the cornerstone which Mr. Aventurine surrendered. Was it really his? <laughs> you question whether he would entrust you with someone else's cornerstone. The Ten Stone Hearts aren't as united as you think. Cornerstones are significantly more precious to them than their very own lives. Also, when it is interesting how, like, suddenly these cornerstones became like a matter of interest, and we have like I'm not really heard anything about them before. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm curious, what are even these cornerstones supposed to be able to do? Like, they make them out to be like something like incredibly like precious and maybe even powerful. And at least I don't have any idea what, like, why. <laughs> What's their you know value? That he's a crazed gambler. The more vocal he is about it, the more cautious I must be. I never imagined someone would share his way of thinking. Honestly, you should see a shrink. Dick. Bring it. The box containing the cornerstone is unique, and only IPC senior staff and related members can access it. But I happen to be among them. <laughs> I appreciate it. Unfortunately, your guess is correct. <laughs> the Golden Stone. Its color and glow are similar to that of Klepoth's body. This is the very ruse he intends to use to fool you. He won't reveal to you that the Ten Stone Hearts chisel their own will into the cornerstones, granting them an unparalleled radiance. And this golden statue is also known as Topaz, not Adventurine. And it belongs to Topaz. Uh -huh. Now I also understand why there's like, um, they are having like gemstone names. <laughs> but why does he have Topaz's, uh, cornerstone? Hmm. So, do you wish to confront him? Uh, not at the moment. I'm more interested to know the location of his cornerstone. The safest place somewhere you'd never think of. 
Because he never intended to hide it. In fact, that cornerstone has been in your hands from the very beginning. I see. This bag. Mixing a cornerstone more precious than life itself with a bunch of worthless jewels disguised as a gift of money waiting to be confiscated is indeed in line with Mr. Aventurine's style. Hmm. Okay, now also I understand the thing with the gift money. That's why we just wanted to give money because his cornerstone was in it anyway. Then he makes up some trivial excuse, downplaying the matter and requests the gift money. This is a gamble, one he's all too familiar with. Betting on your single misstep, leading to a total loss. Learned doctor, I am grateful for your help. The family will surely reward a righteous person like you. As for the villain... <laughs> I hope he retreats in humiliation. Hmm. It was all thanks to your friend with a keen eye that I could add a blot of utter failure to your storied career. <sighs> Ratio, you wretch. <laughs> Finally shown your true colors, huh? Oh, and just to remind you, you currently only have 17 system hours left to live. Treasure your remaining time and savor the delectable aftertaste of defeat. <sighs> you might as well explain yourself a little more clearly. What I performed on you just now was the Harmony's consecration. You were to show allegiance beneath the illumination of their grace. Yet you acted willfully uttering nothing but falsehoods, transforming the consecration into a trial. I genuinely see no reason to absolve you from it. Ah, huh. <laughs> curious. Is this what the harmony represents? But is it built upon constraint and coercion? <laughs> you misunderstand, Mr. Aventurine. Punishment is meant for the irreverent, but I have seen your resilient spirit and thus, I offer you the possibility of a new beginning. Throughout these 17 system hours, you will be unable to escape the dreamscape or contact any of your companions. You only have two paths before you, and it all depends on whether you can complete my test within the time limit. Should you succeed, you will be able to coalesce into the harmony and be with your family. If you fail, you will suffer the wrath of the Eternal Centurion and fall into an abyss of doom. <sighs> oh, sounds like I'm gonna end up the same either way. I indeed do need a servant to help me uncover the evil hidden in the family from an external perspective. I will purge the evil from the inside and bring the real culprits to justice within 17 system hours. When the time comes, compare your findings with mine. If both our findings align, or if you can provide me more insights, then they will truly be able to grant you mercy and honesty. Shameless hypocrites. You took everything from me and still demand the truth. That isn't fair. Your carnival reeks with a stench of cash. Nothing is achievable without it. This is meant to be an act of personal virtue, not requiring the family's support. Your bag is over there. Do as you please. I believe you can trade this bag of worthless jewels for everything you need. That's what gamblers excel at, isn't it? <laughs> Off you go, Mr. Aventurine. You are free. I will wait here for your good news. Well, he's in a bad situation now. This meeting isn't an interrogation or a negotiation. It 
It's an outright execution. <laughs> Why would I do that, Mr. Aventurine? I'm just wondering what a passerby who stumbled upon a scene of a murder could have found out. That's all. He's By not the way, being subtle. Before you go, I have a personal <laughs> question. What is it now? You... Do you truly wish to bring about the destruction of this world? <gasps> Kakavisha! Where did you go? Oh, are you injured? Is this a I got it back, sister. Again? You went to look for them? That's too dangerous. It's just a necklace. It's neither food nor water. Who can survive without it? But I can't live without you, little brother. Promise me not to look for those catechins again. Okay? Sister, don't be afraid. The catechins are fools, but I'm smart. I played a game with them, and I won. Won? What happened exactly? Tell me. I made a bet with them. The two birds in the desert and me. Who will die first? I won. They suspected me of cheating, but I didn't. I won fair and square. <laughs> of course. Of course you'd win. You've always been a lucky child. Gayathra Triclops must be watching over you. But that's no reason to push your luck by going up against those... those bloodthirsty, cruel catechins. Have you forgotten how Mom and Dad... Look, this is just a necklace. But Kakavasha... You are my only family. <sighs> I'm sorry, sister. I thought you'd be happy. Because mom left you this necklace. <sighs> There'll be no next time. It is important. But not as important as you, my dearest brother. I don't blame you, but you must remember what mom said. I also find it interesting why they are making his backstory so important now. Why is his backstory so important for the whole plot of Panacone? Pain and poverty are the trials of Gayathra Triclops. She has also granted us a chance. And that's your good luck, Kakavasha. Your good luck is the most precious wealth we all Avgen have. You're a child blessed by Gayathra Triclops and can lead the clan to happiness. So always remember to protect yourself and never resent the pain and poverty you're going through. All right? Mm -hmm. Listen to me and swear to Gayathra Triclops. Okay, I will swear to Gayathra Triclops to protect this wealth. But sister, if Gayathra Triclops was really watching over us, then why did she not protect Dad when he was swept away by the quicksand? After all, Dad went to the Catechins' land only to prepare for Gyathra Triclops' offerings. And where was Gyathra Triclops when Mom was shivering in our arms? Mom was still pleading for Gyathra Triclops' forgiveness under her breath until the moment she closed her eyes. Sister, everyone praises me for being smart, but I don't get it. If every rain pour was Gyathra Triclops' forgiveness and grace, then how bad were our sins? So much so that we were born in this world of death? Hmm. Oh. 
We're returning to the Trailblazer. Um, excuse me. I can't seem to find any information on this artist in the Iris family archives. The photo you provided also doesn't show any matches. Hmm, just as I thought. I'd like to ask, what kind of traces do people leave when they enter a dream? Are you referring to the records when you enter the dream pool? The equipment will monitor physiological indicators, such as heart rate, blood oxygen levels, and body temperature in real time. This data will be included in statistics and handed over to the family for the screening of any data anomalies. Immediate action will be taken once any illegal behavior is detected. Hmm. I apologize. The hotel does not have access. This information is managed by the Bloodhound family. We can only gain access if there's a problem. Looks like nothing can be found here. At least we know who to look for next. We can ask the Bloodhound family for information. Thank you for your assistance, Miss Allie. By the way, is Miss Robin doing fine? We are looking forward to her performance. Fine? What does that mean? Is there something wrong with Miss Robin? The preparations for the Charmony Festival have been proceeding smoothly, so I guess things are pretty good. I believe she will be able to put on a spectacular show for all of you. Oh, Sparkle definitely mm, will. <laughs> <I'm not sure. laughs> we already know that like Sparkle sure is. No one knows about Miss Robin. I'm not surprised. Like Sparkle is posing as Robin at the moment. But that Miss Firefly is truly mysterious. There's no information on her in the hotel system. Even if she's a stowaway, she should have a disguised identity after entering the planet. She's also in the running for the legacy. How is she going to sneak into the dreamscape unnoticed? Uh, is there any other way to enter a dream? Besides the hotel room's dream pool? Out of recollection, Stellaron Honduras. The Memo Keepers have abilities that are difficult for normal people to comprehend. In the memory zone of Penacony, they thrive effortlessly. A fact proven to us by Black Swan. The hacker girl from the Stellaron Hunters used extraordinary means to unlock the Dreamscape Hotel's seal. According to the scene witnessed by him, it is likely that they are behind Miss Firefly's case. Garden of Recollection and the Stellaron Hunters. Both are possible, but what about the IPC? Since they want Penacony all for themselves, they're bound to have a plan. But why would I do like anything with, about Firefly? I don't see a really connection there. Huh. Who are you guys? Bravo team has arrived at their designated position. Ready to execute armed evacuation operation. Fox, get moving. Why are the APC doing uh, here now? Armed evacuation? Boss, are you drunk? What do you know? It's more efficient this way. Just don't let the director find out. Act first, report later. Understood. Wow. <laughs> I spent all my year-end bonus on the snowball. I don't want my name on the department's major disciplinary notice. Hey, check it out. That place. Could it be the IPC workers from Bellabog? Don't tell me Topaz is also joining the fray now. And why are all the IPC workers such idiots besides like the high-ranked ones? To PC will be conducting special operations within the hotel. Please follow the staff in charge of evacuation to the designated safe zones, or compulsory measures will be enforced. I'll request a beating for you lot! You've been told not to drink during work hours. Uh, hello there, Tobus. At least I guessed that, right? Take him back to the 
the hotel room. I'll organize a meeting later to properly go over how this incident report should be written. Miss Topaz? I never thought I'd run into you on Panacone. <sighs> Long time no see, Astral Express crew. Venturine has told me a lot about your happenings. Huh? Fine. Do as they ask, and try to avoid any conflicts with the family. Report to me before taking any action. Mm. Yes. All right. As you see, the IPC isn't very popular here on Penacone. Cordiality from the family is a mere facade. The former Frontier prison has turned around and cuffed its shackles on the IPC stuff now. Only a Venturine, who carries an invitation, is allowed to attend the banquet. An entourage like us, we can only sit around in the reality hotel, unauthorized to even enter dreams. No wonder a Venturine's scrambling to partner up with someone. The IPC can't back him up in the dreamscape. <sighs> His situation isn't optimistic, I hear. You're all helping to investigate some dirt on the family, are you not? Let me know if you need anything outside the dreamscape. The IPC always treats its partners well. Hey there, Jessica. I'm guessing that's how you pronounce that name, by the way. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Topaz. We're on our way to the Hounds to verify some intel. Perhaps you've had dealings with them? Okay, I'm not wondering why Topaz is here. Probably Topaz is here to pick up Aventurine and probably get her Colonel Stone back. I'm still wondering why she's working to get Aventurine though. <laughs> well, happy lurking then. <laughs> yep, they're tailing us right now. Why not go and talk to them? It'll take the spotlight off me. Being constantly stared at is really uncomfortable. I can imagine that. I wouldn't want to be stared at all the time as well. Oh no, can I actually get like optional dialogue from her? How does it feel to be in business with a Venturine? <laughs> I bet you're not used to it. That's just his style. Ball or nothing is his mantra. He's always cozying up to his clients while egging them on to undertake some dangerous assignment with him. But everyone has their merits, so I won't comment further. Hope you will have some. Uh, will have a good meal then if you get some nice food. But Venturine's luck has always been good. He's always closed all his cases without a hitch and basically never lost a gamble. Which is why, on the issue of retaking Panacone, I'm watching with keen interest. <sighs> of course. It's business, after all. What's important is where you're seated at the table. As for the two cases, <sighs> apologies, but I don't have much info on them either. All I can do is ask you to keep digging for more details. Wait, so is he aware about both Fireflies and Robin's staff? Huh. Okay. I'm guessing she must have been briefed by the ongoings from Aventurine before coming here. But probably she can't contact him now because of like what Sunday did. We're carrying out our captain's orders. What do you want? We made a mistake last time, and we're working hard to rectify it now. We don't have time for anything else. Surveilling the IPC executive Topaz, ensuring that she stays put at the Reverie Hotel during her time on Panacone. We've got the right one this time. <laughs> so that's it. They were the pair who were after Firefly at the time. Ah, uh, I see. <laughs> uh, uh, it's you again. Back for more trouble? We're not afraid of you this time. 
Well, spit it out. Stop bothering us if you've nothing important. So you know each other. Uh, why do you keep running into people you've beaten up before? <laughs> don't ask me. I don't even know myself. Hmm. For some records for me. What is this? Is such a stupid response? Come on. That's right. We're investigating a murder for the family. Can we speak to your captain about the case? Oh. Uh. Well. Hey. The security officer instructed everyone to shut their traps before he returned from Dream's Edge. What murder? You'd better stop spouting nonsense. Yeah, they have, they have, that's right. We have nothing to report. Please leave. Where is us? Looks like they're not going to cooperate. But they did at least tell us that the captain is at Dream's Edge. Did it? Did. Why don't we just look for the security officer then? It's probably Gallagher, the one he mentioned, right? Hmm. Ah, oh, okay. This was the dreams at your area. Oh, such tight security. I bet they're stumped by the case as well. Oh, Gallagher. Oh, Gallagher. Oh, where could he be? I already found him. <sighs> Apologies. The Bloodhound family is running an investigation up ahead. No unauthorized personnel allowed. Hold on a minute. I think I've seen you before. The, the gray-haired one. How much trouble have you stirred up exactly on Penicone? Uh, quite a bit. Not possible. It was you the last time yelling about some clockwork friendship while beating me up with that silver haired girl. <laughs> <laughs> when you say it like that, it just sounds like really stupid and funny. <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> I'm not letting you get by this time. <laughs> Please leave. Or I'll have to get on my knees and beg you. Huh? What kind of heinous crime have you committed now? I didn't really do that much wrong, on, really. We have documents authorized by the family that would aid your investigation. If it wouldn't trouble you, could we see this Mr. Gallagher? Who exactly is this Gallagher you keep talking about? There have been a few people mentioning this name. Even the one with the gray hair. How do you know uh, not your own boss? He didn't send you all here? It was the security officer who dispatched us. That's all I can divulge. Uh, he'll do. He's the one we've been looking for. <sighs> Sorry. No can do. The boss said that since it's a matter of the family's reputation, no one's allowed through. Everyone, please leave. There's really no need for us to make things difficult for each other, right? We're really sorry for troubling you. <sighs> Let's think of another way. Another way? Oh, that's it! Didn't they say something about that... Oh, uh, what was it? Clockwork? That got this guy to change his mind. Can you perform it again? That... Uh, clocky magic! Please. All right. I'm guessing we are tinkering with people's minds again. <sighs> Sorry. No can do. The boss said that since it's a matter of the family's reputation, no one's allowed through. Everyone, please leave. <sighs> There's really no need for us to make things difficult for each other, right? You and his platon family member have met before, and you know he's very uptight. But you're also aware that principles sometimes don't matter when a person is in a good mood. 
Then probably he wants to be well, happy. <sighs> Let me see what time it is now. Whoa! It's this time already. What? <laughs> time to clock out, and no one's gonna stop me. That was easy. Daddy Principal members of the Bloodhound family laughed heartily and left the scene. Uh, what? Huh? <laughs> uh, this clockwork trick of yours. It's kind of dangerous. At least he won't be getting in our way again. Let's go find that Gallagher and ask him the intricacies of the case. I was wondering what all the commotion was. Oh. Huh. Oh, it's you guys. Welcome. Since you made it here, what can I do for you? Hello, Mr. Gallagher, sir. Judging from your tone, it sounds like you were expecting us. And why has, have they been holding us off? <laughs> Miss Himako, you're too polite. There's no need to call me sir. Mr. Gallagher, you even know my name. Of course I do. You folks are from the legendary Astral Express and honorable guests of the Watchmaker. Don't forget, he has access to the whole database of all of the information of the person who is like entering the dreamscape. He probably has like a pretty good profile on everyone here. I had an encounter with this gentleman in the golden hour. I remember that little silver haired girl was there too. I'm sorry for what happened to that kid. This is also the reason why we've come to visit you, Mr. Gallagher. The Express can't just overlook the death of that child. So we've decided to help the family get to the bottom of it, in the hopes of getting justice for her. The Nameless involved with the family. What an unpredictable twist of fate. Why? What's wrong with the family? You're part of it. Uh, it's nothing. On Penicone, everyone loves the family. No matter how much one resists the beautiful dream, when the time comes, they too will find it hard to let go. Who wants to leave a warm nest? Just idiots, little kids, and inebriated fools. <laughs> Mr. Gallagher seems okay. to be getting at something. Well, you got it wrong. I'm not. You want to discuss the case? Sure, come with me. This is not a good place to talk. Let's go elsewhere. Even after that chilling tragedy, oh. this dream is still running effortlessly. Didn't expect that we would be jumping back to Weld and Acheron. Other than the family of the Harmony, it's hard to imagine any other power in the universe that could sustain a building of such magnitude. The family itself is a huge, perfect building. Like a living idol. Each member of the family sees themselves as a piece of the divine puzzle, revolving around a singular core and a shared ideal. Under their command, they loyally fulfill their roles, offering themselves while also receiving sustenance in return. Okay. So Cora's referring to the Eon here. Interesting analogy. Perhaps that's why Pinnacone's beautiful dream has persisted for so long. But the human body has its limits, and so does the Divines. That doesn't sound like the kind of comment a galaxy ranger would make. <laughs> Just pointing out the facts. Mr. Yang will definitely have a better sense of what's going on than I do. Why do you say that, Miss Agaron? That's an interesting fact to say. That really is a quite interesting fact to say. <laughs> I'm also expecting that Weld actually has a bit... Of actually quite a bit more insight of what's actually going on. 
just because of his like experiences of Honka and Big Fur. The beautiful dream is crumbling. But not because of a particular eon, a particular faction, or a particular visitor. That's collapse stems from a certain inevitability of human nature. The family refuses to acknowledge this, and it has ultimately backfired and become a catalyst. As people immerse their souls in the dreamscape, where consequences and pain cease to exist, and only ease and pleasure prevail, they draw closer and closer to necrosis. Regardless of the perceived bliss, death looms as the inevitable conclusion. Also, this necrosis will diffuse and spread. One piece of the puzzle's mutation will eventually cause the entire building to shake, break, and crumble. Hmm. In the end, the dreams that people built in the name of freedom became the cage that imprisoned them. I'm sure you've gained a lot from this trip, Miss Acheron. Are you willing to share your findings with me? Of course. That's if I remember. She says this as her hand gently rests on the hilt of the sword. And then quickly let's go, in the blink of an eye. Hmm. <sighs> Don't mind me, it's just a habit. Owing to events in the past, I've become easily forgetful. It's only when the sword is unsheathed that those hazy memories start to become clearer. Take your time. <laughs> that should do it. I vividly remember everything that occurred on Panacomi. Ask away. The moment of daybreak. I've heard that's where the Dawn Factory, which processes the foundation of the dreamscape, is located. Behind the dreamscape's song and dance stand many imagination factories. Workers create all kinds of whimsical works day in and day out in their dreams. Then they return to reality and sleep on a narrow bed in a room. A far cry from luxury. They say it will suffice. Experiencing the bizarre and motley dreamscape is the best reward. There I encountered a young woman who had just come of age. The perfect time to indulge in beautiful dreams. Her greatest wish was to one day move to the golden hour and see the magnificent garments she had woven with her own hands. For What's certain reasons, about? her wish was difficult to fulfill. But I managed to bring her a garment. Okay. Why is he particularly asking her about the different dreamscapes? Gilded Hour. It's said to be Penacone's currency center. Yes. It is a fortress-like financial city. The economic heart of the dreamscape. The Papeshi people of the Alfalfa family are there to keep it running. Funding blood that is made from money everywhere on Penacone. Everyone there is exquisitely dressed and always in a hurry. The greatest wish of the local Papeshi people is for their future generations to work in the Gilded Hour. Mm -hmm. I've never met anyone who is willing to talk. I could only stand at the crossroads, watching crowds of people hurrying like the wind through the jungle of steel, only to deposit the alfalfa credits that they've earned into the bank's vault. I don't know if they would open the vault door. But before I left, I witnessed a well-dressed Papeshi person plummet from the sky. All those around him continued on their way, unfazed. Okay. <laughs> Not sure what this is supposed to tell us, but okay. I hear the blue hour is very romantic. Do you have any tales to share? Perhaps Mr. Yang has heard. There is a large boat called the Eventide, anchored along the Sea of Dreams, where soft music and dancing persists endlessly every night. I ran into a wizened lady there. She was at the dock, waiting for her long-departed lover to return, waiting for countless hours within time that stood still. In the humid sea breeze, she spoke of her own youth. Like many who desired wealth and love, 
they came to Panacone to pursue their dreams. Alas, her lover's consciousness was lost in the dark depths of the Sea of Dreams. Finally, she suggested we continue our conversation on a boat in the shallows. I agreed and boarded the boat with her. But she never said anything. Her eyes absent-mindedly gazing at the horizon for what seemed like forever. Finally, we retreated to the beach. So far, I don't feel like she's telling us anything interesting. At least I'm not making any sense out of it. The dreamscape of chic, luxury, and consumerism, the moment of dusk. My companions have been there too. Then you all must have seen those who are attempting to realize their dreams. Or have realized them. Scattering money as if it were dust and betting it on all or nothing. Everything has a price. And everything can be bought or sold. Even dreams themselves. I saw an Intellitron there who was preparing to auction himself. Not, okay. When someone wins a bid under stipulated periods and rules, he would do the buyer's every bidding, becoming that person's very possession. Why would you want to auction yourself off? That feels weird. That Intellitron had been auctioned off a dozen times, and I participated in his 13th. That was the grandest banquet I had ever attended. But never again did anyone cast another glance at him. This time around, there were no successful bids for him. All of those stories are kind of weird. This is what I've seen and heard along the way. Someone once said to me, Panacone wasn't like this a long time ago, nor should it be. I've traveled through the reality and dreamscape of the planet of festivities, watched the tides of night rise and fall when time stopped for people, where the spirits of the rich and impoverished remain forever fixed on their own scales. This is why I think the collapse of the beautiful dream is inevitable. I mean, I can't get by in that sentiment. There might be a way to change everything. Perhaps. But if this is indeed the world that people desire, if this is precisely why life chooses to slumber, should we still seek to change it? <sighs> I'm still not sure why they're particularly singling out some of her language in some red. Miss Acheron, now it's my turn to share a story with you. There was a man from my homeland who, at a time when the world was grappling with deep, unhealable pain, made a choice. He wove together the dreams of everyone in the world, linking people's dreamscapes, and shouldered oh. this burden himself. From this... He created a giant, a spiritual Adam. He's speaking about Kevin. He's actually referencing one of the flame chasers. That's cool. And since that moment, the giant stood between heaven and earth, becoming the pillar of the world's existence. As a price, those who found it hard to move forward, who could not advance, forever lost their future. They slumbered in a dream, devoid of disaster and pain, living out their days peacefully in the man's created utopia. And it is because of the wishes of those people who wished not to awaken that this spiritual Adam became unbreakable. Is it really talking about Project Stigma? This is cool. Finally, he's actually refer referencing something out of Honkai Back Third, which he actually experienced. <laughs> and yet, you stand here right now, which also means that man failed. 
Mm-hmm. Because people must always move towards the future. Even if human weaknesses make them pause when they truly cannot move forward, humanity will eventually seek a way to save itself. And that man, he was never a oh, failure. He definitely wasn't. Like everyone in that world, he etched the possibilities of human nature into his heart. He was the sun chaser of legend, soaring towards the sky and embracing his final victory with his fall. Betting the story from Fort Kevin. He ascended to heights uncharted, only to come face to face with the sun, a place not visited by anyone before. His wings would melt because of it, only for him to fall into the sea. And after that, countless others would surpass him, soaring to even greater heights. I'm guessing he's particularly speaking of Kiana, May, and Bronya here. Because they literally did surpass him. A fitting metaphor for the Nameless's trailblazing spirit. Thank you, Mr. Yang. I know what you wish to confirm. The universe has innumerable similar, yet different, worlds. In these worlds, there are innumerable people who look alike, yet don't. Mm -hmm. I, too, have embarked on journeys, encountering old friends with familiar faces on different worlds, witnessing their destinies follow paths similar to mine. So I will tell you. They're also, like, actually now referencing the fact that, uh, yeah, that they literally can be, like, multiple sealers and, like, maze and such in like those different worlds or bubble worlds as it's like referred to in our game big third finally they're drawing some connections and i'm so happy that it is with uh, the necaron even if not completely similar the story you just told it overlaps with my past and within that abyssal dream I ended that man's life alone. Oh. Okay. A bit of theorizing. I think she's trying to tell us that she is actually the Hersher of Origin from another possibility. We had to face Kevin without Kiana and Bronya. Which would, which she would still have the connection to Kevin after all, since she has like the connection to all the flame chasers. That would also explain why they like talking in her like character trailer, um, on the YouTube channel, like about her being the origin, which was a like quite a particular detail which I already uh, was wondering about ever since I saw that character trailer, because her looks. Literally referencing Raiden May. And then also the term origin being uh, like drawn to her. Huh. So she, she gained the power, like the power of the Hirsch of Origin, but something happened that like made Keanu and Bronya lose out in her version of the story. Huh. Then I'm also the swords that were referenced in her character trailer. I also drew the connection that those might be like the Hershers. Um Since there's like 13 swords and you actually like encounter 13 Hershers, at least in the previous area that I did. With like the third theme being the Hirsch of Finality, which is also referenced in the char character traded in um, as the end. Hmm. If that's what they're going with, that's kind of cool, but also sad for May. 
or like Ekaran in this case, because if it mostly went the same as it did with in the Conquer Impact third, Ekaran did not deserve that. <laughs> I am not who you think I am, nor will my home be as fortunate as your world. I am sorry. I feel like they're probably confirming her that she is another version of the Hirsch of Origin. This is pretty cool. It's fine. I don't mind, so long as I can alleviate your suspicions. There's something I still wish to know, Miss Acheron. Under that representation of the hunt, exactly what sort of power is it that has motivated your solitary journey thus far? Mr. Yang, before answering that question, I wish to continue the previous topic. Or is it just one? I just have to ask my friend something. Just asking my friend something because he's like also playing um, Star Rare. Yeah. But he never played Hong Kong back first, so I'm just asking you something. <laughs> I'm curious about his response. I like your analogy very much. Indeed, birds are born to fly. But in a distant past, their ancestors could only gaze at the sky in envy. They saw that faraway ray of light from above the heavens, piercing through the clouds and blanketing the earth. And so, time and time again, generation after generation, the birds spread their wings and took to the sky, attempting to touch its ceiling, all because the sun was there. Then, what if the last bird finally soars into the sky? Only to realize that the end of the light is not the sun, but darkness. Then why, exactly, do we even walk towards the light? I'm curious to know what exactly happened in her case. I'm very intrigued now. And then we're back to Black Swan. You're switching so many POVs here. Long time no see. Having fun on Penacony? Acheron. Who's that? This voice. It's not Constance. Could it be her companion? Though I don't know exactly what you are or what you're up to, my bullets will find you. Until then, you best find a casket store on Panacone and ask the owner to reserve a good quality casket for you, imposter. Imposter? I see. She gave my whereabouts to someone who's tracking Acheron too. Who are you? Huh? Uh, did I make a mistake? <laughs> uh, who the heck are you? I'm the Garden of Recollections Memo Keeper. <laughs> Not bad. This is the kind of tough challenge I like. You that imposter's bodyguard? <laughs> Never mind. It's fine. I'll leave around for you. So get that forehead clean and wait for me. I don't know what you're talking about. But, you know Acheron, the Galaxy Ranger, yes? I have something to ask you. 
<laughs> Are you asking me to write your will? Sure. Go ahead. This is getting Not more, quite. more like, like confusing. I only want to ask, how exactly did she become a Galaxy Ranger? She's clearly not a path strider of the hunt, but you are, aren't you? Tell me, what's Acheron's deal? Are all galaxy rangers actually just supposed to be like followers of the hunt? I'm not sure if it's like have been mentioned somewhere in in some text somewhere. But I've always been wondering why they always like um bent of the like why they always thought that she would be um following the hunt. But if all the galaxy rangers are supposed to follow the hunt then that's even yeah, okay. I can understand why they also would call her her an imposter. Because she's following the path of nihility. an ally. What a stroke of luck. Oh, well. <laughs> I'll be on Penacone soon. A memo keeper. Go buy a bottle of his Donna's white oak and warm it up. And I'll raise a glass to you. That lady's past. <laughs> well, nobody knows. But if all you want is a simple answer, Sure. You best get a chair and take a seat. That woman, named Acheron, is an emanator who should not exist. Hmm. This has been called an emanator we know for a while now. <laughs> this gives me, like, another idea, though. Um, I think no matter what happened, she should have met the cocoon of finality one way or another if she fought against Kevin and beat him. So she should have come in contact with the cocoon of finality. I'm not sure if she did take the cocoon of finality's place or her or the powers of it or whatever. Um, but if she has the status of an emanator now and came in contact with the cocoon of finality, maybe has a connection with it or whatever, would it also make Kiana an emanator? Like, hmm. Because, like, both games are, like, using different terminologies for the same thing most of the time. Because, like, they don't have, like, the thing or uh, the, um, the imaginary tree. There's a few, there's, like, one archive entry which, like, mentions the imaginary tree but more is of kind of theory in the world of Star Rail. Which is, like, a proper term... Um, terminology used in Home Compact Fur. But they're like still having the same concept of like a uh, imaginary tree still in Star Rail. So could just be, could just be emanators maybe uh, um, just another term for like either Hershers or more specifically the cocoons do I would actually expect more the cocoons to have like some kind of eon status you look pale or is that also part of your act <sighs> I didn't think you'd have the nerve to show yourself I thought this was exactly what you wanted after all I faithfully fulfilled my duties as you instructed. Just tell me if you can't hold on any longer. So, 
the genius of the Council of Mundanites wants to be my <laughs> undertaker now. My, what an honor. Yes, and I'm pretty sure the people at the Strategic Investment Department would love to be notified of your death in due time. But let's not forget, you won't be seeing them, because I'm the manager of this task. Great. Then tell your people that Aventurine is ready to go in 17 system hours. <laughs> oh, you've got a lot of nerve. How exactly do you plan on completing your task while your hands are tied by the Harmony? My conversation with Sunday convinced me that there's a traitor in the family, and that they hold the secrets of Panacone. So, I took the opportunity to set everything in motion. I even managed to recover the gift money. <laughs> Things haven't gone this smoothly since I walked through the doors of the reverie. Now I'm only one step away from victory. Let's just wait and see. Okay, he did get put into a bad spot for Sunday, and he's still like saying he's easily going to take victory. What is his plan? What the hell? What are you cooking? <laughs> Sounds like a very elaborate way of saying that you failed. <laughs> That's all I can say. Have you forgotten, Doctor? You betrayed me. Go. Do what you must. I look forward to the sight of the IPC fleet surrounding Panacone. You've achieved what you desired, haven't you? That's true, but what's your plan? Did you conceal an orbital support beacon in that gift money bag? Well, who knows? Maybe that's why I'm handing out cash even when I'm about to bite the dust. He has been giving us a lot of cash, so... <laughs> you are indeed a gambler. An insane one at that. I think I agree with Ratio here. Or maybe I am. Who knows? <sighs> Fine. Here, take this. Open it when you're on your last legs. You'll thank me. Oh. What's this? Medical advice? <laughs> And he's gone. How? You catch on pretty fast, Doctor. <laughs> Asking me to solve a case without giving a single clue. How typical of you. Wouldn't get it, scoundrel. But the way you're all on edge about that stowaway. <laughs> it's just as I guessed it would be. As for now, let the rain of wealth from the IPC fall evenly on everyone. Oh, we're having like this trippy effect now. <laughs> to achieve for two Icarus, okay. Nice reference for Kevin, I guess. The world has truly lost its way. You. Wait. I get it now. This is some sort of prank show, right? You must have some camera set up around here to film yourself doing good deeds, right? You youngsters are always looking for a quick way to get an audience. But you know what? A truly great show never comes easy. <laughs> oh, a great show will start soon, old man. But before that, I need to ask you something. Do you know where I can find death in this dream? Ah, I see. Another fearless youngster looking for death. Oh, well, let me give you a piece of advice. Don't think you're the first one who's ever thought of that idea. Death 
Not even remotely innovative. I bought it from Dr. Edward. He claimed it was some exclusive fancy schmancy stuff. Oh, but what a disappointment. The effects were awful. First, some monster covered in eyes stabs you in the gut. And then all you see are blurry glimpses of buildings and lights. The sky was spinning so fast it almost made me puke. Why do all people always Is have to talk so much? All? I didn't yeah. <laughs> what else can you expect? Appropriate response. Don't put too much stock in the Pentacone movie industry. They even call this junk groundbreaking art. Can you believe it? <laughs> what a joke. Well, I'll leave you be then. I hope you have a wonderful day. A monster covered in eyes. That sounds like the memory zone meme. But buildings and lights. I don't think those have anything to do with death. That whole dream bubble was probably created using rumors and gossip. Wait, we're in a dream bubble right now? I can feel something inside my head. Is the harmony starting to kick in? I mean, we can see it clearly that it is. Would you be willing to support my performance? And keep the song of beauty alive in the cosmos? Wow, how fabulous! But why would you give such a wonderful gift to a random stranger like me? Well, you see, I can't bear to see anyone in this sweet dream suffering from poverty. Oh, that's incredible. It's a lie, but hey. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. If you ever get the chance, please feel free to come by and indulge in my singing. <laughs> sure thing. Oh, by the way, do you happen to know anything interesting about death? Death? That's a pretty scary topic, and it doesn't really match the mood of this sweet dream. <laughs> True. <laughs> oh, you see, I'm a tabloid reporter collecting ghost stories in Panicone. <laughs> As you know, the more chilling the stories, the more attention they get. <laughs> Maybe you could help me out. Well, if you're up for some gossip, it's not about death. But there have been some rumors about a guest at the Reality Hotel who fell into a deep sleep and didn't wake up. It was like they were in some sort of coma. Nobody knows what caused it, but luckily the customer eventually regained consciousness. Well, all customers are under the protection of the family, after all. <laughs> Thank you. This will make for a very juicy headline. May she they protect us? Unexplained coma. <laughs> That's actually what happens to your body if your brain dies in a dream. But unfortunately, the customer ended up waking up in the end. <laughs> <laughs> the disturbing voice in my head. It's getting closer. A sip of liquor. Blissful reprieve to drown a thousand sorrows. Let worries leave. <laughs> I know I have what it takes to become a poet. Maybe. Oh? <laughs> oh? You, you're giving these gems to me? Didn't expect to meet such a generous soul in this place. <laughs> or are you just pitying me? Well, it really doesn't matter. As long as I have soul glad, that's enough. This is just a dream, after all. <laughs> is all glad actually an alcoholic beverage? He does appear to be drunk. You really shouldn't drink so much soul glad, my friend. It's not good for your health. Oh. <laughs> Maybe I really should quit. But not before meeting the devil of soul glad. <laughs> <laughs> the devil of soul glad? 
Care to elaborate? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a seahorse. With a long neck. <laughs> they say it loves to appear to junk people. Especially the ones who are passed out on the side of the road. <laughs> How funny. A seahorse? <laughs> yeah. Very funny indeed. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> oh, does everyone have to go through so much torment before joining the family? Oh, darn it. <laughs> now I just want to dig out my brain and use it as evidence. Please do not take the entertainment facilities. Take care, my friend. If you ever find yourself in danger, remember that the hounds are always ready to help. Also, I've questioned that we are in a dream bubble. I forgot that the dreamscape is just kind of a big dream bubble. It just sometimes it's confusing that you're using different terms for the same thing and just randomly switch them or switch them around. It's just something like that just popped in my head. <sighs> the expression on this hunk of a man was complex, as if we were looking at a mud-soaked sparrow, unable to fly and nearing its end. You don't look good, my friend. If you need assistance, I can contact the hotel and have them wake you up forcefully. That won't be necessary. I have some business to attend to, but thank you all the same. All right, then. If you ever need help, don't hesitate to reach out to us hounds. Well, actually, I do need a favor. As the most outstanding hound in Panacone, have you come across any <laughs> stowaways recently? Stowaways? How could there be stowaways in Penacony? We've never had anything like that before. Well, you're wrong about that. <laughs> All right. Good luck with your work then. Oh, what was I even thinking? Family would never share intel with the IPC. <sighs> How many more do we have to ask uh, around like this? Most of them are not really telling us anything useful. Not enough credits left. You want to talk to me? Sure, but nothing too sensitive, okay? Huh. Wealthy people have fancy ways to enjoy this dream. But to be honest, I've never seen anyone who gives out money to others like you. So, are you trying to be the prince from the tale, handing out his gold leaf garment and melting his lead heart in the fire? <laughs> I'm flattered. I'm no prince, and I just thought these gems would help you speak. So, as an investigative reporter, maybe you've heard something about death? I just wanted to ask, uh, I just was wondering, why would he ask a kid, but it's a profession, and the profession are actually older than they look. Ah, uh, another curious soul. I see. Well, that was actually the topic I was most into when I entered the industry. But my boss shut it down. How did your boss talk you out of it? Well, she simply said... Covering baseless urban legends like that would make us look like some third-rate tabloid. <laughs> I thought about it, and she had a point. Reporting on stuff like blowing out birthday candles and getting spooked by nightmare ghosts isn't exactly professional material. I agree with her, dear. Mm, guess she's got a point. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> The harmony stuff is creeping in more on the screen. At least it looks like it is. Hmm. Were you wanting to talk to me? 
Sorry, I thought you were checking out something behind me. Is this a gift for me? Are you sure this isn't some kind of mistake? Yes, it's for you. Just take it. Shut up and take my money. Is this for real? <laughs> Someone is actually giving me a gift. Not for my parents, but for me. Thank you. Thank you so much. No, it's not much. I just want to ask you something. I knew it. What's on your mind? Are you trying to ask about my father or my mother? Um... Neither. I just wanted to know if you've ever heard about death in the dreamscape. Oh, you sound just like my father. Always warning me about danger, even in dreams. But it is danger in this He's dream. He's an Intellitron, so his dream entry methods are different from us organics. Can't count on him to protect me if something does go haywire. Funny. Right now, I'm still under his protection. <laughs> how ironic. Okay, I just want to ask how it works that his fa father is literally a robot. But I'm guessing he's some kind of, like, he got, that he got adopted by the robot, maybe. But this just, like, threw me off for a moment there. <laughs> Alright. Stay positive. Gold will always shine one day, right? Hmm. The devil of soul glad. Dangers in the dream. And nightmare ghosts. Well, surely death is a popular topic in this sweet dream granted by the family. Hmm. Remember what I said? You Sigonians are better off hiding in the sewers. Huh. Look at you, snooping around and sticking your nose everywhere. Is the uh. smell of death so enticing, my fine fellow? Hey, Despago. <laughs> oh, it's you, masked fool. I should have guessed it. You're the imposter who appeared on TV after Robin's death, right? I heard you got caught by the family. I gave you a clear clue. Befriend a mute. Simple and straightforward, you know? And what did you do? You messed it up and ended up as their prisoner. I told you to make friends with a mute, not become one yourself. You really let me down. I think with Mute, she's actually like referring like to us, like the Trailblazer. What do you mean? You know better than I do. Who watched the little songbird that couldn't sing perish right before their eyes? You did, Blondie. Uh, no, I, I mean, what did you mean by becoming one myself? Oh, I feel like I know what I'm doing here. Ah, uh, nice fourth wall breaking. <laughs> He's becoming immune himself because we are actually controlling him as a player. Mm hmm. <laughs> well, it means you'll soon end up like her, unable to speak ever again. Or that. But I feel like my fury also counts in a way. <laughs> but it's a good thing if you ask me. Because... Because I'm getting closer to the truth. Right? Oh? Why else do you think I'm handing out cheap trinkets all over the streets, fool? All part of the act. Fool's bait. The more pathetic I seem, the more likely you'll come sniffing around. So, now that I've drawn you out, will you reward me with an answer for my efforts? Why should I help you? 
Don't you want to see Panacone descend into... <laughs> chaos? <laughs> well, I can make that happen. I just need an answer to one question. Back then, when you asked me to find a mute, did you really mean Robin? Hmm. I doubt that she even means Robin. I think she means the Trailblazer. Am I wrong now? Then my whole theory about the uh, for, for breaking that, that we are playing Avenger Arena is just like completely wrong here too. <laughs> and what if I say no? Then I'll thank you. <laughs> oh, the word no has never sounded so pleasing. <laughs> well done. I admit I underestimated you, but what difference would it make? Let me tell you something. There were two mutes, but one is dead now, and the other, though he's still in Penacony, I'm afraid you'll never find him again. Now I'm completely sure that I was on the right track from the beginning and never strayed, fool. What is he cooking? Right now, there are only two things missing from my grasp. The meaning behind the truth and the means to expose it. <laughs> How impressive. That's quite a fancy way of saying I haven't <laughs> learned anything so far. <laughs> Not exactly. I've gathered enough clues to prove its existence. And that's enough for me. As for the answers to my questions, I'll find them within 17, no, 16 system hours. Oh, really? Only 16 system hours? Well, let me lend you a hand. Here you go. This is my precious, mutually assured distraction button. And I have one just like it. When either of us presses it, the other and the whole of Panacone will go up in smoke. Hmm. If you're really so desperate for the IPC to take over Panacone, blowing up the chessboard isn't a bad idea. Start from scratch. That's where the IPC excels, right? Have we seen this button Press before? Button when you're at your wit's end. And of course, feel free to reach out to me for my hospice care too. Oh, a deadly button, huh? <laughs> well, I guess the family didn't take your threat seriously at all. Otherwise, how on earth did you manage to bring it in here? <laughs> <laughs> I have my own ways. That's all you need to know. But didn't she already offer us a, like, mutual destruction button in, like, uh, the Black Swan side story? Do we still have it? <laughs> Do we? <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> well, I'm afraid I'll have to decline your offer. Who knows if your little gadget will actually work. By the way, I have no plans to search for the other mute friend you speak of. But it's good to hear that he's still here in Panacone. I'll handle the rest myself. I'll orchestrate a grand finale for the downfall of the family. <laughs> and at the climax, the walls will crumble, people will wake up, and those who couldn't speak will find their voices again. When that time comes, go ahead, press the button, light up the sky with a magnificent fireworks display for me. Catch you later, fool. <laughs> You're still talking big, but sure, if that happens, I'll stay true to my word. Just don't let me down now, okay? So, number 35. 
You're back. Like your new lucky charm. I'm guessing this is another episode of his past. Can a commodity code really be considered a lucky charm? Silence! I didn't give you permission to speak, you Sigonian hound. <sighs> the guys in black didn't say much, so I've no idea what you did to save your skin in that massacre back in the day. But I figured you must have had good luck, so I bought you. From now on, you and your good luck are my assets. <laughs> are we clear? Your first task is simple. In addition to you, I've purchased 30, uh, well, 34 other slaves. Go and play a game with them. <laughs> you came out alive after two days. It proves that you are the real deal. I feel like there was a word missing there. <laughs> Testing out if you're a good product. Aren't you worried that the money you spent on me will go to waste? I've got stacks on stacks, Blondie. The slave market is never short of self-righteous brats like you. But you look good. That's why many customers are betting their fortunes on a scrawny brat like you. So go along now and uh, don't let your master down. Hmm. <sighs> How much did you spend? What? My price. How much did you pay for me? Huh. You really want to know? Hmm. Well, it was 60 tanba. No more, no less. Okay. I'll take my chances. 30 tanba. If I come back alive, you'll give me 30 tanba. Deal? <laughs> Are you trying to strike a bet with me? Oh, you've got some guts. Yeah, sorry, but uh, that won't do. Don't forget your place, slave. You're not qualified to be at the table. You're just a chip. A light thrown away in someone else's hands. Either you come back with more chips for your master, or you never come back. It's all or nothing. Don't embarrass me, my lucky hound. Oh. All right, back to our POE. How much longer is the story going? What brings you here, Gallagher? <sighs> Some friends from the old days. Do you have a moment to spare, Siobhan? Oh. I have the whole day to spare. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Dream Jolt Hostelry. This bar offers a wide variety of drinks, but we draw the line at Soul Glad. Why settle for ordinary when you can experience extraordinary? We're dedicated to serving up nothing but pure joy and laughter. <laughs> Sounds good to what me. What would you like to drink? I'll whip it up for you. Oh, look! A lady as cool as Sir Ball! <laughs> No, nah, she's not so old. Who's Serval? Will you uh, introduce me to her? Huh? Oops. <laughs> she's heard us. Just spare them, my esteemed bartender. I'll take over the bar today. I'm getting up there in age, and I need some practice before I forget the skills that used to put food on my table. Uh, where did you stash the ingredients? They're all under the counter. Since our guests have traveled from afar, Shouldn't you whip up some special drinks? That's exactly what I had in mind. <laughs> hey, my friends, do me a favor. Go around the bar and bring me any ingredients you fancy. Oh, the discussion you get to might choose. take quite some time. 
So I'll prepare some customized non-alcoholic drinks for you. Ah. In the bar? But aren't all the ingredients right there on the counter? Why, we're in a dream, my lovely lady. You can help yourself to anything if you wish for it. Comfort, hunger, confusion, or even boredom. It's all within reach, right at your fingertips. <laughs> oh, did you hear that? She just called me my lovely lady. <laughs> Come on, Notch. Even in reality, mixing drinks is more than just throwing ingredients together. A bartender needs to capture the bar's atmosphere, master technique, and spin a tale of mystery and anticipation. Only then can a perfect drink crafted with a customer's life story be created. In other words, what you get from your drink is down to luck. So don't overthink it. Indecisiveness has no place when it comes to enjoyment. Hmm. Sure. Okay, collect the entries for the drinks. Uh, can this be used for mixing drinks? Oh, and there's a note underneath. Exchange with your precious things. Oh, what should we exchange for it? And who should we give our stuff to? <laughs> give it back after I asked. Let's go for Brace of Fire Romero. Changing. Happiness belongs to the noble. Does this mean we can take it? <laughs> Doing good deeds does pay off. Thank you. Recipe bright future. Okay. Oh, there's a chest. Don't forget Wait, to let your friends is... in on the action. This isn't your area. No, 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 shouldn't be. The chest just may be new. Yeah. Mm. Uh, check out this bottle. The liquid inside looks beautiful. And the label reads... Dream syrup, thick. I don't see an expiration date, but the production date is half an amber era ago. <laughs> Ugh, drinking this stuff can't lead to anything good. That's for sure. Ugh, that's true, but this really doesn't seem fresh. Did you find the bottle of syrup I've been hoarding? Don't worry, it's all just a dream and it won't upset your stomach. It's been aging for years and should have a refined taste by now. Feel free to have some. It's perfect for entertaining lovely guests like you. I'm not sure if we should trust uh, a pause though. Then we'll keep it for now. Oh, that's quite a stash. Not sure if it's enough. Stay out of my way. I'm looking for Siobhan. Uh-huh. What's all the commotion about? There's something over here. I want to investigate that first. Uh, hey, look at all these chips scattered everywhere. A few days ago, an actor from the Iris family came. Caused a ruckus with Siobhan. Those chips must have gotten scattered during all the chaos. Nah, it turned out to be a landslide victory. Uh, that being said, opening a bar in this place, filled with monsters, is quite a feat. Siobhan must have a lot of tricks up her sleeve, right? You'll have to ask her yourself to find out. But I have a feeling she won't budge unless you impress her with an incredible drink. Mistakes. Okay. I guess we are putting chips into our drink. Oh, 
Maybe it goes just for you. I'm so glad. But I thought they didn't sell Soul Glad at the bar. <laughs> Let's give it a shake. Nice. It's still busy and has a long shelf life. <laughs> That's possible. You see Soul Glad everywhere these days. So it wouldn't be a surprise if someone brought a bottle here. Why don't they sell Soul Glad in this bar? Did something happen? It's all about the bartender's pride. It wouldn't make sense for customers to come here and order drinks they can find anywhere else. That's the mindset I use when I brew my coffee. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> you're right, Himeko. Is there anything else I may find around here? Uh, let's do a double check. I'm guessing nothing will be down the stairs, so... Mm, nope, not seeing anything else. made myself clear enough, Miss Amagi. The Dream Jolt hostelry only welcomes guests who want to enjoy a drink to their heart's content. I'm sorry, but I'm not interested in your proposal. But you have the talent. You'll attract a huge audience. You're destined for the Iris stage, not for this run-down shack. Come with me. We'll become the talk of Penacony, a shining light into every corner of the dreamscape. Please, Siobhan, I really need you. <sighs> As you see, I'm entertaining my guests. Don't make me repeat myself. Fine. If you don't come along, I'll just sit here and not go anywhere else give me a sparkling drink sweet with extra ice well Just someone's persistent one moment what's her deal we can't discuss the case with other people hanging around the bar hey can you do that clockwork trick of yours again How come you here we go? We need to hurry. <laughs> yeah, I'm counting on you. Okay, guess we can get her tinker with You're one of again. Siobhan's guests, right? What can I do for you? If you're here to convince me to leave, please stop it. I'll never leave until she accepts my proposal. I just don't get why she won't leave this place. This rundown shack with no customers whatsoever. I mean, we are customers of hers. Shaban just said anything can be imbibed. Perhaps you can try various experiments to see what different emotions can brew with different drink ingredients. Oh, okay. It's ridiculous, right? Our paths were never meant to cross, yet I'm still holding on to her. I'm too timid and shy, longing to shine, but afraid of stepping into the spotlight. I need her guidance because I'll never be able to do anything alone. You don't know Siobhan's past, and you have no clue how radiant she used to be. Even among the talented Iris family, her skill was unmatched. I know she probably thinks 
I'm just trying to ride her fame to get ahead. But all I want is for her to reclaim her place. Well, you can't force her to, though. We can speak a mix of bitterness and sweetness that permeates the air. The next moment, the emotion turns into a liquid, filling your goblet. She's still not leaving. Maybe I'll have to try again. Eternal endurance. I just don't get why she won't leave this. You're one of Siobhan's guests, right? I just don't get. Okay. Calm is just You're one of default. Siobhan's guests. I just don't. Um, I'm just too angry. Those darn Irish jerks! Uh, they're the ones who forced Siobhan into hiding here, running this pesky bar. It's all their dirty scheming. Huh. I get it now. She's not leaving because she doesn't want to run into them again. I, I can help clear the way for her. I can do her a favor. I'll go back and write a letter to the Dream Master exposing the crimes committed by the Iris family. Siobhan will definitely appreciate it. She may know though. Things might get out of control if she gets any angrier. I need to come up with another plan. I just don't get why. Is this is illusion just heavy again. I've seen it. The moment when Siobhan and I share the stage, the crowd is going wild, applause crashing like waves, the aroma of irises fills the air. A beautiful melody playing, ribbons dancing around us, and the taste is sweeter than honey. I've seen that scene countless times in my dreams, and every time it mesmerizes me. That's why I have to bring her back to that world, no matter what it takes. <sighs> Want to raise a glass, my attentive listener? Let's consider it a toast to my far-fetched dream. Come by. You put pink or white grape soda into your tall glass. She rooms can be... Uh, okay. Well, well, it was too fast. Talking to you has got me feeling a bit down. My thoughts are swirling, making my mind clear. And bringing tears to my eyes. And I... Okay. Clear. Yeah. And bringing tears to... Maybe... I should... Find a place... To reflect on what Siobhan... Truly means to me. Here's the payment for the drinks. Please... Pass it on to her. I'm leaving now. Bye bye. Amaki has left? <sighs> That's good for her. Radiant dreams may be enticing, but they're nothing more than dreams. Her drink is on the house. Please keep the money. When you're ready, go to Gallagher. <laughs> I can tell he's itching to show off his skills. All right. Let's see what I can do, Gallagher. That being said, mixing a drink is way simpler than you'd imagine. Just pick your favorite ingredients, toss them in a glass, mix it up, and it's done. So, go ahead, explore the bar, and bring me any ingredients you prefer. Nice work. Let me take a look. You found some interesting ingredients there. Now, take your pick. Each drink has its own unique flavor. 
And the base ingredient sets the tone for the initial taste and the lingering aftertaste. So, which one would you like to use as the base? Mm. Let's take the dream syrup. <laughs> you won't find a sweeter drink anywhere in Penacony. And that's what today's dream seekers crave. Now that you've chosen the base, it's time to pick the adjunct. The ingredient that'll create a marvelous chemical reaction with the base. It should give an unforgettable taste without overpowering the main tone. So, what's your choice for the adjunct? I mean, it should just be like so with a lot of stuff here, but here's to as a dream seeker, just immediately reminded of part two of Archive Back Forward. Turn into a bright future. Mm. How does that idea turn into endurance? Not very intense, yet evocative. After those despicables sent Mikhail away, I found myself lost in the wilderness of my dreams. They say that even the dirt here oozes with sweetness. <laughs> All I tasted was stoic bitterness. Mikhail. Almost there. Let's pick a decoration. Which style do you prefer? Anything you need, I've got it. So I'll continue to the Hanusan coin-shaped lemon sizes. I would take the lemon slices. Favorite. Hmm. Ambitious, aren't you? Well, it's done. Here's to you, dreamer, with this glass of the premature burial. Looks interesting. To bringing time to a standstill. <laughs> well done, Gallagher. You're not over the hill yet. <laughs> So, are you satisfied? Oh, the flavors! They're way more sophisticated than Soul Glad! The richness and layers of these flavors are a masterpiece, especially with the adjuncts. I can taste the spicy and sour notes with a hint of sweetness. I'm not entirely sure what it all means. Maybe Mr. Gallagher can shed some light on it. <clears throat> well, if you're expecting a profound answer, I'm afraid I'll disappoint you. The imagery it implies is pretty straightforward. It's just a glimpse of what this dream truly tastes like. Nothing more. Does this true taste have anything to do with that, Mikhail? name does sound familiar. When you got knocked out by that masked fool girl, I think I heard someone calling that name. Do you remember? <sighs> I was right about you. You guys seem to know quite a bit. And now there's no reason to hide anything from you anymore. Oh. Let's dig deeper into the case. And of course, I'll tell you a story about Mikhail. All right, let's start with what we know based on the clues the family has. It seems that Firefly isn't a local or an invited guest. In other words, she's a stowaway. You know, uh, she managed to fool me at first. My age must be getting the best of me. But here on the planet of festivities, stowaways are a common sight. You're bound to run into one sooner or later. After the incident, the Hounds wasted no time searching for that girl in both the dreamscape and reality. But here's the thing. We only received bad news, and the trickiest kind at that. She simply vanished, leaving no trace in the dreamscape or reality, as if she had never come to Penacony at all. That's suspicious. Huh? Does that mean... That's impossible. The problem now is not that she's dead, but that it's as if she had never existed in the first place. 
Let me be frank. This case, actually, is unlike anything the Bloodhound family has dealt with before. Dealt with before? So, death does happen in Penacone, if I understand correctly. You've witnessed it, so there's no need to hide. Even the shiniest city has its dark side. We're all adults here. Surely I don't need to explain too much to you. Mm -hmm. Confronting the family based on that alone would be naive. Death may occur in sweet dreams. So what? Such events are highly unlikely and only affect a tiny number of people. If you really want to delve deeper into this case, you need to understand the true problem with the family. And that is? I guess it's time to tell the story of that Mikhail. You're very perceptive. The Astral Express has received that music box too, right? Do you know the secrets it holds? There's a message. Witness the impossible in the realm of dreams. Find the legacy of the Watchmaker, father of Penacone, and thus the answer to the question, why does life slumber? <laughs> That's the exact wording. Hey, why are you laughing? Wait, did you write it? It's quite poetic. No, but I'm the officer in charge of this case, so how could I not know? I'm sure you must have noticed that this message didn't come from the family. You might have even guessed that the relationship between the family and the watchmaker isn't as close as it seems. That's just our speculation. Actually, it's hard to believe that the father of Penacone and its actual managers are at odds. Now I can assure you that your speculation is absolutely correct. The family has considered the Watchmaker an enemy for a long time, but the Hounds haven't been able to track him down, as he seems to be living only in the characters and stories he created. Ah. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever wondered why the family allowed the Watchmaker to send out such a ridiculous message to the outside world, inviting you here and causing chaos? Are you telling me that the Watchmaker is clucky all along? So, you want to seize this opportunity to expose the Watchmaker? Well, now you understand why the Oak family authorized the Nameless to assist in the investigation, but kept you in the dark, right? Because the Watchmaker is not the legend of the land of the dreams at all. He's the most shameful stain in the history of Penacone, and he's the root cause of all the anomalies in the dreamscape. Interesting. You don't get it? Well, I mean... Mikhail, the betrayer of the family, he's the watchmaker. Oh. And Mika, Mikhail is... I think it's Mika, right? And you haven't seen Mika in a while. Sometime later. Here we are. Clock Studios Theme Park, the most popular entertainment center in Penacone. Wait, aren't we supposed to be discussing the Watchmaker? I would have expected you to take us to maybe a library or an archive room of sorts, but an amusement park? The culture of a city reflects its history in the most authentic way. To you, it's a fun place. But to me, it's a prison for the planet's past. You know that Penacone used to be the IPC's prison planet, right? All the prisoners were brought here, helping the Garden of Recollection salvage the leaking memoria from the macro void. Okay. The prolonged exposure to high concentrations of memoria caused a unique phenomenon. The dreams of countless prisoners intersected and overlapped, and people started meeting each other in their dreams living lives that were almost identical to reality. But everything has a price, and sweet dreams are no exception. In the end, the dream world was unable to alleviate the suffering of prisoners in reality. 
One of the prisoners broke free from the IPC shackles and fought for freedom. He is Hanu, the great leader of Dreamville, the great peacemaker, and the faithful companion of the underdogs. <laughs> History is always written by the winners. However, it's undeniable that Clocky is an animation that draws from Penacone's actual history. These characters not only exist in Dreamville, but also in the distant past. Once you realize this, you'll understand why we're here. There are okay. so many members of the Bloodhound family around here. They just received a lockdown order, supposedly from Sunday himself. Who knows what it's for? I want a Yangard. Come here. <laughs> so many of them. I've never seen anything like this, even when they're tracking down suspects. Well, it's a masterpiece from the family, after all. Besides the followers of the preservation, the family members are the best at creating mind-blowing marvels. Let's find a quiet spot and continue our conversation. The view here is great, right? We can see everything from here. Including Clocky. If all the characters in the animation are based on characters in reality, then Clocky's counterpart is definitely the Watchmaker. In the animation, he's Hanu's partner and one of the founders of Dreamville. Does that mean the Watchmaker was personally involved in that war and sided with Astana? It was a monumental war for freedom. Hanunu fought alongside a motley crew of masked fools, nameless, history fictionologists, mourning actors, omen vanguards, even visitors from beyond the sky. In the end, they emerged victorious. That is quite a stack crew of different kinds of people. Among them was the person who would eventually be known as the Watchmaker. But if you do the math, doesn't that mean the Watchmaker was around for several centuries? I'm not sure, but Mikhail was already the watchmaker when I met him, so maybe he inherited the title. How old are you now, Mr. Officer? <laughs> I'm 13. The fuck? <laughs> no way. Not even close. <laughs> Anunu freed the frontier prison, but peace still eluded him. With limited resources, threats from the outside world, and internal conflicts between major prison districts, the future of Ostana was uncertain. It wasn't until the Watchmaker approached the family with the idea of turning the prison into the planet of festivities that Penacone finally gained its name and glory. Thus, he became known as the father of Penacone. But didn't you say the Watchmaker betrayed the family? And you said you were his companion, so that means you... No. I'm not his companion. But rather one of his many children. But I am indeed a traitor. Not to the family. But to... Mikhail. What did you do? <sighs> I did nothing. And that's the worst betrayal of all. Just like you, I had close companions. We dedicated ourselves to Penacone. But the Oak family, they set us up. Mikhail was too old to protect his children anymore. So we left the family to find our own path. We were branded traitors of the Harmony. Even though the true traitors were someone else. While they continue to praise the Watchmaker's name in the world, behind closed doors, they condemn him on a pillar of shame. Nevertheless, 
We wanted to clear his name. We intended to find the real traitor, the one responsible for all this, and restore Harmony to Penacony. Hmm. But we failed. Too much time had passed, and the land of the dreams had become deeply corrupted. After countless fruitless pursuits, I gave up. Like a lost dog. The family accepted me and made me an officer, supposedly as a form of forgiveness. But it was actually a punishment. Since then, I've been completely cut off from my partners and my past. As for Mikhail, I heard he died in obscurity, in a place where no one could find him. That's when I realized that the Penacony I once knew would never return. That's sad. We're truly sorry for what happened. But this is not the end of the story, right? Hmm. Apparently, someone has inherited the title of the Watchmaker and has been secretly working against the family all this time. Well, that's one way to look at it. However, only one member has truly inherited the Watchmaker's title. Unfortunately, after all these years, I have no idea who that person is, or if they're even real. Or just Mikhail's lost soul haunting the dreams. So, do you understand why I'm spilling all this info? Because I believe the girl's death must be connected to the Watchmaker's legacy. And at the end of all these mysteries, mm. we will find the answers we are seeking. If it really is Mikhail's ghost, I want to meet him. If only for the last time. For those who despise me could form a line from here all the way to the entrance of the hotel. But those willing to look me in the eye and hear me out? Let's just say, there won't be many. I may be guessing what's up with Firefly now. But I'm not too sure yet. This is still like way too vague. I've told you all I know is a sign of gratitude. Thank you for listening to this old dog. Bark and all. Hmm? Uh, something just happened at the theme park. Uh, now if you'll excuse me, good luck to all of you. How ironic. What's so different between the stowaways rejected by Penacony today and the dream seekers once hailed as pioneers several amber eras ago? Mm hmm. Gallagher does have a troubled past, it seems. While Firefly's whereabouts remain a mystery, his stories shed light on our suspicions about the true identity of the Watchmaker, his connection to the family. And the power struggles hidden behind family, oh. and the power struggles hidden behind sweet dreams and death. Exactly. Gallagher suggests that the real traitor is someone else, probably within the Oak family. Maybe it's even Sunday himself. That lines up with what we've gathered so far. Firefly got involved in this mess because of the legacy. And now we're sure that Aventurine's accusations against Acheron are baseless. Uh, you're really into Clocky, huh? He's just a fictional character, not a real person. Well, about that. Speaking of which, that Clocky who only reveals himself to you is quite intriguing. It's a shame we've never met him since then. Now that we've confirmed a lot of our suspicions, let's take a moment to think about the clues we have. Send a message to Welt and see how things are going on his end. Okay, how is this going to come to an end? How's progress going on your end? Not a bad. Getting a situation, I agree that the family might be hiding something extremely important. And now headed to Dulight Pavilion. Akron, huh? Didn't I mention we say she was dangerous? I've confirmed that she's on our side. Don't worry, please wait for a while. I'll keep you posted as soon as I find anything.
Oh, we are playing playing Acheron's POV now. Huh. Are your companions worried about you? They're just checking up on me. Let's get in and get out. Seems they've made some progress. Looks like we're about to enter the depths of Dewlight Pavilion. It's been a smooth ride. Almost too smooth for a heavily guarded mansion. True. Let's see if there's anyone waiting to greet us. Do I have my own Acheron or do I have the... Huh. I could use the story Acheron. Why can I not see the info? <sighs> I would just use my own Acheron. Mm, though maybe that the story Acheron may be stronger at the moment. Something feels off. A grand mansion like this and not a butler or servant in sight. Could it be due to the disruption caused by the emergency? Well, this door is open. Looks like we'll have to investigate ourselves. Let's proceed with caution. Just one moment. I can draw the blade slightly. Within a moment, her breath becomes imperceptible. What? I've made myself less noticeable. The crew can explain their presence as authorized by the family, but I can't come up with any excuses for being here. I see. What in interesting technique uh during expression using Acheron's technique to attack no enemies we instantly defeat them without entering combat when attacking enemies no technique points are consumed yep we already made use of that uh i just want to check the area down here and maybe something's new No, it looks like there isn't any change here. You already picked up all of the chests and everything. for discussing important the footprints here are different from the rest two sets of them looks like outsiders might have passed through here not long ago can you identify the people who left these footprints well there's a unique pattern here flamboyant even and judging by the size i'd say these were men's shoes if I'm right, it could be the IPC ambassador, Aventurine. Aventurine. What about the other set? It looks like they were walking side by side as opposed to one behind the other. So the second individual is likely equal in status to Aventurine. The IPC is eager to reclaim Panacone, so their presence here is not unexpected. I'll go for you now. No, stand up, uh, stand up. Able to open it. Can I enter this? Dude, will they comment on it? Nah, that doesn't look like it. But I don't think we'll have to go in here, so... <laughs> mm-hmm. 
While there aren't any people in this mansion, they've set up quite a few mimetic guards to patrol this place. Good times. No time to say bye. Boom. I weep for the departed. It too shall fall. Her ultimate looks so cool. <laughs> Jesus. Still waters of oblivion. Give me strength. Thanks. You're too good to me. Destiny isn't true. Uh. Stand still. Free will, or was it fate? journey begins. I weep for the depart. It too shall fall. So cool. Oh yeah, I like this. Look, it dropped something. A note. Looks like instructions from the butler for the other servants. Hmm. Seems like the mansion's entire workforce were assigned other tasks before Robin's death. It must have been a big project to require that much manpower. The Charmony Festival, perhaps. But no matter what their main priorities are, there should always be someone left at the mansion, right? So you're saying someone deliberately cleared the place out? Yeah, but I don't know why. No, well, we'll have to see. No one here either. Since no one's around to entertain us, let's make ourselves at home. Stay close to me so that my white can cover you too. Hmm. Is there any adult fisher around here? Or like birdie? This light cone is securely guarded. It must hold some important memories. According to Robin's interview, despite having performed on so many grand stages, her favorite performance was a, a pretend show she put on with her brother when they were just kids. I wonder how their relationship is now. Growing up brings gains, but also losses. Yeah, time is a way of smoothing things out. The beautiful dreams of youth will eventually fade away. Hmm. Can we get a line cone? Or wait. Do we maybe have do, I, do we maybe have actually access to the line cone already? Uh no. <laughs> I want more light cones. <laughs> List of death victims. Ooh. Answerworld, a male Halloween was dragged into the sea by an unknown meme while sunbathing on the beach in the moment of oasis. Subsequent search and rescue operation proved unsuccessful. Note, this was the first case. Can't tell if anything is wrong. Insufficient investigation. Mori, a male from the Cien show, entered a spheroid in the golden hour and mysteriously disappeared while the spheroid was bouncing in air. Later examinations showed no signs of force entry, force entry or exit on the spheroid. Note, it seems the culprit can ignore physical barriers. Conventional investigation methods feasible? A marker, a female human, per 
participated in a talent show in the moment of Scorch Sand, but accidentally fell off the stage before the judges turned around and disappeared in the shadows below. The footage for that episode of the show has been deleted. Note the carpet of swift and skilled at disguise. Caution is advised. Weber, a male Papeshi, fell down when entering his office on payday in Gilded Hour and was killed by an unknown meme that suddenly appeared. Didn't Akron talk about this? About like the Papeshi in the Gilded Hour that fell from the sky? The memories of the witness have been processed. No, preferring to attack wounded or vulnerable individuals and certain, maybe taking orders from someone else. Also, maybe answer all the connection to that, like, uh, like, um, to the girl that was there waiting for their love, which like disappeared. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, Shemet, a male Pepeshi was taken away while flipping over a card at the casino in the moment of stars. The casino staff was dealt with, has dealt with the aftermath of the ex uh, incident. Note, flipping a card. Interesting. Deckham, a male humor, jumped into the ocean of dream bubbles in Blue Arrow in an attempt to impress his girlfriend but got entangled by an unknown meme under the sea and drowned. His girlfriend's memories have been processed, but the outcomes are not satisfactory. Further intervention from motivators may be necessary. Note, most cases are related to the ocean. Could this be a breakthrough? Additional note, scratch that, after checking only two co cases were related to the ocean. Kaixia, a female Foxian, was engulfed by an unknown meme while playing Chirimi slots in Golden Hour. The incident caused a huge commotion at the spot. The memories of most witnesses have been processed. Note, could it be the sweet dreams troop? Does it have the ability to imitate and learn? Multiple culprits? Just like the master mastermind behind the scene. Kambega, a male bloodhound, was attacked by an unknown meme before his shift changed in the moment of serenity, resulting in his death after a fight. Security measures have been enhanced in the prison area. Note. Not notable details in this case. Need to ask the Bloodhound family to strengthen defenses in the prison and other facilities. Janet, a female human, disappeared while visiting the film history gallery at a museum in the moment of Seoul. She was drawn towards a mysterious sound calling to her and walked into a screen, vanishing without a trace. The sight has been condoned, uh, cordoned off. Vanishing into a screen without a trace sounds like Persona 4. <laughs> Note, this is the only case where the culprit demonst demonstrated speech ability. Further verification is required to determine if this is a false claim. Monk, a male Intellidron, was attacked by replacing his newly purchased high-grade vision sensors in the auction of the moment of dusk. Note, vision sensor, noteworthy. Annette, a female Papeshi, vanished via touching up her makeup in the bathroom before the graduation ceremony at Paperfold Academy in the moment of Seoul. She was caught by a meme into a mirror and disappeared, witnessed by a teacher at the scene. Note, mirror? Not worthy. Current hypothesis is related to sight. Chloe, a female Intellitron, was attacked by a meme and disappeared when she blew out the candles during her birthday celebration with her friends in Blue Hour. All witnesses are currently receiving treatment from motivators. Note, her more attacks occurred in dark or dim environments, a sight really a trigger. Carissa, a female Halloween, was harassed by a fervent fan backstage before a performance at the moment of Scorch Sand and was subsequently abducted by a meme during her escape. The Bloodhound family has apprehended the fan. Note, abducted? Uh, uh, mm -hmm. 
abducting? Keep a lookout for this ferment fan. Dorian, a May human, took a nap before the end of his shift in the moment of daybreak without telling his manager and was abducted by an anomie hiding under a chair. Emergency intervention was provided and production at the factory has resumed as usual. Note, taking a nap. Plus consider discussing with the Alfafa family about increased vacation time and additional breaks for workers. Uh, Marlow, a May human, disappeared after being involved in a car accident in Golden Hour. Witness reported the presence of an eerie meme who fled underground at the scene of the accident. Note, this is a dis uh, genuine case of death. The meme must be connected to a concept such as death and murder. No, the list comprises over 100 cases related to the memory zone meme death. However, the author of the list seems to still struggle with figuring out the pattern. Okay, so there's many more cases than this. The information about Robin, Firefly, and the other victims. I don't see any commonalities among them. Looks like the rumors were right. Death does seem to be targeting random victims. And based on Sunday's notes, he's no stranger to death. Mm -hmm. He's just surprised that it has resurfaced. And that it has targeted Robin, maybe. I mean, she's, she was still his sister after all, if I remember correctly. A letter from Robin. Dear brother, how are you doing these days? I had intended to visit you at Dualite Pavilion as soon as possible upon my return. But with the approaching Charmony Festival and your busy schedule, I refrain from troubling you. However, an urgent matter compels me to share something with you immediately. Since my return to Panacone, I have experienced a peculiar change in my voice. At first, I thought it was caused by exhaustion or illness. But after consulting with doctors, they assured me of my perfect health and dismissed my concerns. However, my voice worsened over time and I even experienced periods of complete voice loss. Okay, so the change in like voice is not only like because of Sparkle acting as Robin. In order to find answers, I conducted many private investigations, using my idle time out of rehearsals, of course. Eventually, I realized that the harmony in Panacone is not pew. Uh, pew, yeah. A discord lurking within has tainted my voice of harmony, which I believe to be the root cause of my vocal issues. I immediately realized that such levels of interference can only occur if either a powerful external force is pulling the strings, or if a senior member of the family is involved. Unfortunately, further investigation has less has led me to the latter conclusion. This is an extremely alarming discovery. A traitor has emerged within the family in Panacone and is highly likely that this person is one of the four family heads. I trust you implicitly, dear brother, because of our promise. With the Charmony festival on the horizon, I fear this person intends to impede its progress or even use the festival for some ulterior motive. At any rate, I suggest you monitor the other family heads while also prioritizing your own safety. You're the only true family member I have left. There's another matter that requires our attention. During my investigation, I learned about a memory zone meme death, and my further inquiries led me to believe that the culprit who directed it to cause this series of incident is likely the aforementioned traitor in the family. I've collected more clues and am prepared to verify my hypotheses. Rest assured, you can just focus on the preparations of the Germany for the Germany festival. Once I've thoroughly investigated death, I will come and meet you immediately. It won't take too long. And I'm guessing she died during her investigation. Give me a heavy workload. Please take care of yourself. Don't stay in the dreamscape all the time. Spend some time in reality when you are free. I've brought some more specialties from other galaxies. Giant moa pudding tarts from Morillons, wild strawberries from Akunyako, 
known for their exceptional size and sweetness, which I'm certain you will enjoy. And almond, mer almond meringue cream cracknels from Medicia. Don't forget to enjoy them. May Sheba be with us. Your sister, Robin. As soon as I and the rest of the crew arrived in Penacone, Mr. Sunday and Robin showed up to greet us. I remember hearing something unusual in her voice. And now it seems I was right. Robin believed it was because the harmony had been tampered with somehow. But as far as I know, there aren't many entities capable of interfering with the power of paths. Meaning? If there really is a traitor within the family, that person must hold a high position or possess unimaginable strength. That would explain why Mr. Sunday has been having such difficulty in catching the traitor. Hmm. What else can we find? A letter from Alfafa to Sunday. I've been informed about Robin and I would like to express my deepest condolences. However, I must remind you that you now hold the position of not only her elder brother, but also the head of the Oak family. Your reaction has implications for all of Panacone. Why is there so much to read, oh, by the way? <laughs> As Panacone is going through a critical period, it is crucial that you do not allow your hatred to cloud your judgment, and be cautious not to engage in activities that others can use against you as leverage. I heard that you are planning to dedicate a significant amount of time and resources to find death. Such action does not serve the best interest of the family as a whole, and I strongly advise you to reconsider it to avoid potential impeachments from other family heads. While your coincident death is connected to the Watchmaker, I have met that Watchmaker many times long before the Dream Master adopted you and your sister, and I have never found any evidence linking him to that memory zone meme. Now that you are the head of the Oak family, it is essential that you assess the situation objectively and consider the bigger picture. It is unwise to allocate all of Panacone's resources and manpower for the sake of a personal vendetta, as this would bring dishonor to the Great One. The Charmony Festival is on the horizon and the Watchmaker's guests are all barely holding back their own agendas. Neither you nor I could face the se severe consequences if Dominicus's arrival is delayed. Therefore, I urge you to control your emotions and fulfill your responsibilities as the head of the Oak family, focusing only on the festival and avoiding any interferences from external sources. In addition, we must not neglect the honored guests invited by the watchmaker, as mishandling this matter could lead to diplomatic conflicts with other major factions, involving us in disputes that could have been avoided. As your elder, I hope you comprehend the gravity of the situation and handle it appropriately. As for the matter of Robin, there would be time to pursue it once the festival concludes. By then, I will provide you with the necessary resources and manpower in the name of the Alfafa family to help you get your revenge. Additionally, I have heard rumors that the Dream Master is not entirely pleased with your recent activities. I advise you to conduct yourself with caution. Yours sincerely, Old Oti. Oti is a weird name. It seems neither the Dream Master of Penacone nor this Old Oti is happy with Sunday's recent performance. They don't seem to care much about death. Instead, they're more concerned about the Charmony Festival and the Watchmaker. Maybe the other family heads don't think death is a big deal. One thing's for sure. There's a lot of internal conflict within the family, and everybody has their own agenda. And more to read. List of suspects. Esteemed head of the Oak family, the investigation into all the suspects involved in the death case has been concluded. The findings are summarized below for your review. Respectfully yours, Esme Drott. Attachment. 
Ryan, a generous star from the Oak family, short grey hair, leading a laid-back lifestyle, often caught stacking off at work. Percy, a diplomatic clerk from the Oak family, dark curly hair, suffering from severe OCD, unable to work until his, until his tie is tied and checked five times. Rashi, a diplomatic clerk from the Oak family, long grey hair, a devoted fan of Glocky, exhibits a preference for the clock element in almost all aspects of life. Connor, a professor at Paperfold Academy, short red hair, rumored by students to be an enigmatic figure due to his unkempt appearance. Doriani, a professor at Paperfold Academy, short grey hair, known among students for bringing cigarettes to class instead of textbooks. That sounds... Uh, yeah, <laughs> not good. <laughs> not setting a prime example there. Pururu, a researcher from the Nightingale family. Long blonde hair, um, known for being obsessed with soda and having the research labs trash can filled with empty drink cans. Benny, a dreamscape producer from the Nightingale family. Curly brown hair. Freya and Finn, exhibiting an almost fanatical affection for dream construction. Maureen, a dream weaver from the Nightingale family, short grey hair, standard statue for Pepeshi adults, possesses a collector's fetish, particularly fond of mugs and jugs. Sir Wittager, the head of the Nightingale family, short black hair, distinguished by his race, uh, rare on orange bugles. Blah. Pat, a renowned actor from the Ivers family, short grey hair, featured in numerous classic films and TV shows, known for his distinctive tie, brand, tie band. Warridge, an actor from the Ivers family, short black hair, frequently cast in gangster themed films, widely acclaimed for his performances in close quarter combat scenes. Nadir, a drink smith from the Iris family, short blonde hair, enjoying a good reputation among tourists for his engaging conversations. Carrie, an actress from the Iris family, long pale hair, known for cross-dressing in films to play his suit-clad male protagonist, affectionately called by her fans as the Grey Beauty. Cool. Brandon, a guard from the Bloodhound family, short blonde hair, awarded a medallion for rescuing 10 stranded tourists in an incident caused by a meme. Carter, a security officer from the Bloodhound family, short blonde hair, small statue, often spending his leisure time at casinos in the moment of stars. Woolsey, we'll I'm guessing that's how it's pronounced, the captain of the Bloodhound guardians, short blonde hair, a stocky man bearing several scars from previous encounters with memes. Olomu, a detective from the Bat Bloodhound family, short black hair, known for his unkempt, subtle, excellent undercover work and investigation within underground gangs. Corinna, an ancient from the Bloodhound family, long grey hair, nicknamed Fireball by underground gangs due to her tendency to wear all red attire while enforcing the law. Melanie, reporter from the Hafa family, short blonde hair, standard Papeshi stature, stature, exhibiting a mental age beyond her actual years. Gabe, a gambling agent from the Hafa family, short black hair, standard Papeshi stature, used to enjoy a candy before a gamble starts. Lothric, a tell butler from the Alfafa family, dark curly hair, tall stature, possessing a sense of humor that attracts numerous VIP customers. Lester, an auction trader from the Alfafa family, grey curly hair, medium statue, regularly indulging in a dream choice special after work. Nagi, a project manager from the Alfafa family, long blonde hair, a shorter ten. A shorter than average Papeshi maintains a calm demeanor that has generated a lot of revenue for the family. There are a total of 52 suspects on the list, followed by Sunny's notes. Perhaps there is a common thread among them. I have reached a conclusion. I mean, expect for some of them having like, connections to memes. I there aren't any like proper motive listed listed in this list to why they should be the suspects. 
which is weird. Mr. Sunday has done some serious research on his suspects. This traitor must have been causing trouble for the family for a long time. They all seem to be insiders, but I haven't met any of them. Huh? Wait, these characteristics. What is it? No, nothing. Maybe I'm just overthinking things. However, if this traitor really exists, could they be responsible for Firefly and Robin's deaths? Perhaps that's why Sunday is taking this matter so seriously. Okay, you're insinuating that there's a hint Nothing in the characteristics? I haven't seen it. I just noticed there are like a lot of like short gray hair people in there. And a lot of Apache. And besides the two academy professors, all of them are like linked to some kind of family. Before coming here, I had all sorts of scenarios in my head about dealing with the family. I did not expect an empty mansion. Watch out. Someone's approaching. Oh. I don't think trespassing on forbidden areas is the way to be a guest, Mr. Yang. And... Acheron? The Galaxy Ranger? Our apologies, Mr. Sunday. Uh, nobody came to greet us, so we entered without permission. I hope you can forgive us. But even if there's no one to greet you, you should wait for the host. Don't you agree? Even without the famous Galaxy Ranger. As far as I know, the crew has officially accepted the family's commission. So coming here will be unnecessary for you. On the contrary, that's exactly why we're here. To ask you about the case and gather more information. We don't want any loose ends. Oh, that's kind of late. Mm. Well, since you've come with goodwill, I have no reason to show you the door. Rest assured, he hasn't figured out that we went through those documents. While the truth remains a mystery, I'm getting close to it. I assure you that the traitor will soon pay the price. Let's hope justice will prevail soon. I have a question for you, if you don't mind. How did the family come to the conclusion that the murderer was within the family? With all due respect, it's in the IPC's interest to wreak havoc before the Charmony Festival, and the family has every reason to suspect the IPC's involvement. Well, other family heads share the same suspicions as you, but in my opinion, the true murderer would never have drawn as much attention as that ambassador did. Not to mention, I personally shackled him a while ago. However, I'll give you a suggestion regarding your suspicions, Mr. Yang. You should be more cautious of Aventurine. While the wicked can't break through high walls, they can plunge their evil dagger into the heart of the righteous. He's a businessman, not some philanthropist. But right now, he's out there handing out his wealth on the streets. And he went to the Clock Studios theme park all by himself. Who knows what kind of scheme he's cooking up? Oh, we actually While the going to meet him. Is dedicated to keeping our guests safe. It might be wise for you to stay alert. You never know what unexpected troubles could arise. If he said like the clock is due to use and we are headed there ourselves, we are definitely going to be meeting him there in a bit. And he's watching Victor Venturine. According to a Pierpoint hotline tip, there was a major breakthrough in the shocking Ejhazio Aventurine case. The suspect has been arrested. This fraud case has been linked to many departments within the Interastral Peace Corporation and the Intelligentsia Guild, causing a large drain in manpower and resources, resulting in the IPC taking a massive loss. The case's main suspect originates from Sigonia 4 and is one of the survivors of the second Katika Avjin extinction event, who does not carry an interstellar refugee travel permit. Oh. 
Well, As eventually we can make sorry. Investment department had diamond sentiments. The IPC has appropriately relocated the suspect in the spirit of the charter and will continue to conduct further investigations as to the motive of the suspect. What pretty eyes. Tell me. Do they shine in the dark? Well, if they did, I'd sell them in a heartbeat. You don't know how many people long for your eyes to be closed forever. As a servant, you should not resist your master. Yet, you went and killed that man anyway. No lawyer has the audacity to defend you. Perhaps... You ought to represent yourself. Not difficult, but definitely pointless. You're pretty confident on your eloquence. Did you also think that when you lied to the Intelligentsia Guild? Ask and you shall receive. You wanted the perfect construction material. All I did was offer a possibility. It was just a small wager. If your luck holds out, the IPC will dig something up from the golden sands of Ejihazo. Maybe even the Sand King's remains. Pity your luck has run out. Yeah. I'll admit that. What I'm more curious about, though, is why such a grand scheme failed to benefit anyone in the end, including the perpetrator himself. Madam, I already have what I want. To be brought before you for the next high-stakes gamble. Then let's talk about the second gamble. Tell me, what are you prepared to wager this time? My life. <laughs> I bet you won't send me to the gallows. <laughs> what do you want, then? I want your Lenore to meet with me. I have something to say. And then what? I want cash. <laughs> it can't be that simple, can it? It is that simple. Thirty tonbas. The remainder of my... market value. Thirty... Tonbas. No more, no less. Hmm. With this money, I'll climb to even greater heights than you. Grasp even more riches than you. <laughs> I wager you won't give me this chance. Which is why you should call him here. Interesting. A pity Diamond won't see you. No one gets to see him. From here on out, I am Diamond's representative, and I will decide on his behalf. You're wrong. Thirty Tonbas, he'll give you that. And much more than that. Wealth, status, power. The IPC will give you whatever you want. Even what you don't want. <laughs> okay. Kakavasha. <laughs> A good name, but unfortunately destined to be buried in the dirt. You, though, you deserve to live, to create even more wealth for us. Go. Pick the clothes you like, then choose your desired identity. And then, <laughs> use them well, child. May your plans never suffer failure. Hmm. Interesting. Life is like a long-term investment. Those who choose correctly, do the correct things, reach the correct outcomes, and show the world their value. People can't always make the right choices in their lives. 
But luck has always been on my side. I've never lost. Is it because Gyathra blesses me? Well, if that's the case, she must also be looking upon me right now. My success is inevitable. But... What then? <laughs> Even if I overcome this difficult trial... What would come next? What awaits me after this glorious gamble? An even more glorious one? Will I return triumphant with unending riches after countless successes, or... Will I encounter failure? Never to return. Because it's own voice, <laughs> but I think it may be the harmony using it. What? Yep. <laughs> Am I dreaming, or have I gone completely insane? I will do a short title break here because I really need to go. We will definitely be continuing though, so <laughs> I will be right back in a bit. Um, so yeah, we're back. All right, I'm back. Let's see if he is insane or not. <laughs> I may be crazy, but I'm not stupid. Get out of my head, newborn of the Harmony. <laughs> the Harmony? Oh, don't play the fool. Not the first time we've met. No need to be so polite. I'm you, and perhaps even more aware of yourself than you. Of what exactly? Uh, all right. And you still want to drag a bunch of unfortunate fools with you through death door. That's why you're here, isn't it? <laughs> a grand unveiling. You really think you can pull it off? Why not? Well, you may have fooled everyone. Before you're entirely gone, I'll be with you for the last stretch of your road. Let's have a heart-to-heart -heart while we walk. <laughs> what exactly are you? just to reach one outcome. And I am that outcome. Kakavasha, I am your future. <laughs> First I'm hearing things, and now I'm seeing them. <laughs> Great. Am I going to be elevated into the Harmony's Emanator next? It really feels like this is the how many Why are there no guests here? What's that featherhead doing? I got another birdie. There it is.
I guess it doesn't matter before I do the puzzles. What is blocking you? Ah. I just didn't put, just didn't push the one block uh, far enough. Also, I'm just noticing the mission goal has some like missing characters, or, like redacted characters. We still say it's head to the center stage, uh, center stage of the park, but still. I'm curious that he is even doing that to begin with. Is it Papesha? Just a Papeshi? No. A child. Probably him as a child. <laughs> I thought miners weren't allowed in Golden Hour. Hey, kid. You okay? Are you lost? What's wrong, mister? Yep, it's him as a child. Your eyes. Impossible. Who are you? They're pretty, aren't they? Sis said they're a gift from Mama Funga. Colorful eyes are said to bring good luck. <sighs> Mister, you have pretty eyes too. Beautiful. Are... Are you alone? Where are your parents? They're in that amusement park. Papa and Mama went in first. I'm just about to go look for them. I have to go. Goodbye, mister. Hope you have a good time, too. Those eyes. And Mama Funga. No, no, it... It can't... There aren't any Aptons left. So it must be you as a child. At least that's what I'm guessing. And I'm still hearing a bird somewhere around here. Mm. Question is rare though. Maybe I should hold it off until I'm not, not disturbed by this harmony effect thingy. It's kind of annoying. I can't go down there somewhere. Let me check out that. Three. 
I just also would like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, nothing of interest to you. This is blocked off, okay. The bird heaven is somewhere around here. Right on. I just hear it, but I don't see it. Is there anything hidden? Oh, okay, this is also blocked off. You did do that. Well, when you put it like that, even Ratio's a teeny peacock analogy sounds pleasant. <laughs> The best way to prevent others from seeing your true colors is first being able to fool yourself.
decline that invitation. You had the chance to embrace elation, and was that not what you most wanted? But you chose the IPC instead. Did you get an invitation and to be a masked fool? For the preservation. Interesting. I doubt it. Do you even have anything in common with the preservation? Oh, I thought you knew. Didn't you say you had me pegged? We're done. Either stop talking or disappear from my sight. <laughs> That's fine. But who exactly is about to disappear here? Well, it's not going to be me anyway. <laughs> I just hope so. I don't think I can get for you. Okay, catch up. You Afton boy. Young Afton boy. Probably catch up to the young Afton boy. That's what it says. I did see the trigger. Where is it? Yeah, what's the second trigger? Why is it only? Pyrenean moving. Wow. <laughs> Wait, where? Wait, where even is it? Oh, up there. <sighs> okay. Stream four, the gleam. Mm. Wait, you're not a bird. Or may just be to be doing the uh, noises. Hmm. They're actually playing a cartoon. Is that very interesting when you watch this? Keeps getting haunted by it. When Mama said goodbye that day, how many catechins were like jackals hot on your heels? I know you won't forget that sound anytime soon. Those shrill cackles. You had to hide right under the noses of those savages. You and Big Sis. Shame. 
wasn't that the last one dad must find? Why do they keep taunting him, it taunting him with his memories? I've always kept it. Come on. It's a rag. It's not like you can ever wear it. <laughs> now you don't have to hide. You probably won't even deign to get your pretty outfit wet in the rain. Well, your social capital has changed after all. I've never changed. Hmm. On the contrary, now you're the one who does the hunting. For the last round of hide and seek, and you get to be it. You should enjoy it. That child. Could he be in here? At this time, he's really like chasing himself. I'm guessing. Hmm. Why are there so many birds here? I would say like the mother bird. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I didn't even need to change anything about the orientation. But we did meet down there somewhere. Also, Mr. Passa, I want to check that first before I run around in circles. Let's explore around here a bit more first, I would say. Hmm. Actually, I might do it with my other party and then put like topaz in my uh, topaz in just so it makes it easier to find chests. 
Because I really like just want to get through the story now because the rebel late already. Stream forth the gleam of old plates. Is this hmm. Topaz's cornerstone? A topaz. What is this doing here? Curious why it was here. Maybe that winged guy put it here to taunt you, just to make you realize that your painstakingly arranged magic show is nothing but a death rattle. The cornerstone's hue is the same as the radiance of Quipon's body. <laughs> I've got to give it to you. I've heard a but that lie deserves a prize for sheer nerve. If he were just a little bit smarter, the jig would have been up right there. Oh. This is just bait. Of course. That's why Ratio's betrayal was one of the keys to your plan. I have to say that Dr. Abby was superb. Or... Maybe he wasn't acting at all. All the better for you. Sunday didn't become head of the Oak family by acting sloppy. He's obsessed with control. You have to give him enough detail to satisfy his meticulous nature, but not so much that he gets suspicious. Which is why you had Ratio seek him out and leak the plan on purpose. To prevent the other party from suspecting anything. The intel you gave to Ratio was all true. We spoke the same to Sunday. Finally, Sunday took the bait, found the other cornerstone, and before you know it... Really has been cooking if this was all part of his plan. through my mind. Your mind. <laughs> it's our mind. You're me. And I'm you. We're the same. The best way to prevent others from seeing your true colors is to first be able to fool yourself. Well, the luck is a whole stick, so. This is the other cornerstone in Sunday's hands. Rather beautiful green. Just like you. Smooth. Cunning. Tell me. What's its name? I'm guessing it's trade. <laughs> Why are you even asking? Adventuring is the stone of luck and trickery. That's what you said when you received the stone, wasn't it? This type of stone isn't rare, but its hue is very similar to a certain gem. In fact, it's often used as a substitute. And that more precious gem is... Jade. Yeah, my guess was correct. Even Sunday can't tell the difference. Well, looks like Jade can be substituted for a Venturine, too. <laughs> Sauce for the goose. A Venturine, Topaz, Jade. Three elites, three cornerstones who, for a measly panic only, offered their everything. Oh, you're even more united than the 
As I've said before, three chips are sufficient. All or nothing. Hmm. But will it be the former or the latter? <laughs> we'll find out soon enough. Suddenly, you don't know where it is? I just want to hear you say it. After all, it really does resemble its owner. As you wish, then. They never went anywhere. They're right where they belong. Piled up with these cheap baubles. <laughs> you smashed the Aventurine stone before you left. Oh, just look at it. Shattered. Just like your life. Poor thing. A humble pebble coated in the most lustrous sheen. I take it back. This thing is far more precious than your life. You're absolutely clear about the consequences of doing this. Blasphemy against Klipov's body. You think the IPC will let you get off scot-free? Well, Diamond has always been all about results. As long as I can create value far beyond the cost, the ends justify the means. Hmm. How else would the family be fooled if there was no price to pay? It doesn't matter. Even smashed to smithereens, the preservation's cornerstone can still be used. Its effect may be greatly diminished, but it's enough for me. Now I'm really curious. Why does every step you take involve reckless risks and the choices you prepare for yourself always come with a strong impulse for Good. <laughs> Good question. Do you truly believe that the greater the risk, the greater the reward? I wouldn't have guessed you'd be so loyal to the IPC. <laughs> there is so much you don't see. Which is also why you'll never see how I'll win it all. We'll just have to wait and see, then. Ah, the cornerstone is gone. Another illusion of the harmony. Huh? Stream forth the gleam of old blades. Is there anything else behind these? Doesn't look that good. Hello. We meet again, Mr. Pretty Eyes. Yes. We meet again. Did you find your mother and father? Of course. Big Sis is there, too. The four of us were just playing hide and seek. I'm so happy. On our way here, Papa even brought me to see a blimp. Flynn. Nice. <laughs> I think you mean Phil. Yes, that's it. Putting many drawings together and turning them into a moving wall painting. They put me, Papa, Mama, and Big Sis together, turning us into one big family. Aww. You should give it a try too, mister. You look sad. The amusement park will cheer you up. I'm <laughs> sure. Okay. Where are you going? Ah. Hamster born night. Fast and fury nuts. That's the fast and furious pun. Wait, what am I supposed to do?
Parry example. Best to flip button to dodge up the girls and opponents. If you dodge right before you're about to crash into roadblock, you will trigger turbo dash. Okay. Here we triggering turbo dash and picking up supplies. When she is full, you enter nutty blitz and experience long greater. Okay. It's limited to movie mode. The broker's bar below indicates a film progress. Not kind of picking up surprise or something top skill. We're invulnerable. Trigger the demons for as many times as we can. Gotta go fast. Oh, come on. I mean, we totally cracked what we were able to do. Um, what's the max score? Not a bad score, eh? <sighs> Boring. I think it's been now it's more, I guess I'll welcome to try my out. Okay. I will mess around with that in another time, though. Uh, come on, we can do the part. <laughs> All right, should reflect and stuff. I almost forgot it. Destined for oblivion. I weep for the departed. It too shall fall. Devils. I'll crush them all. Hmm, it's not charging Akron. The dice have been cast. I'll send him, but I'll take it off. Send him. Send him.
Nice. This is what exploring the cosmos is all about. Also, what I should look at since it's still so uh, since we're getting so late. Hmm. I should get my daily science from the horrors up. Like horror up. Because I haven't picked him up for the day yet. Why aren't you talking? You've piqued my interest. I'll admit that there are still aspects of you that I don't completely understand. Well, you sound sincere this time at least. The Armini isn't even hiding it at this point. I just want to get to this one. Wee. Shortcut. There are so many flowers here. Fix this. This one's for you. This is a uh, oh, nice. I saw you. Oh, it's way too small to be like a challenge of maze. A dead end? Oh, is this the wrong way? <laughs> it, is this? Nothing to do with you. Do you need a hand? These are manacles on you. That man gave you your first job. You made your first pot of gold. <laughs> I remember it all too well. You wrapped that iron chain around your fist, for that is the only tool you could find. Shut up. Oh, you don't wish to face your past. Unwilling to admit that your life is worth the least 60 toss-ups. Well, from what I see, you refuse to confront it because it only proves your weakness. How could a weak person take such daring risks? the thrill of danger, but he refused to let go of meaningless sentiments. Even in this beautiful dream, the only thing you dare allow yourself is death. Does he even dare to? All it takes is a meager sacrifice. I bet Opal would have resolved 
this without a fuss? A pity you're not him. Well, you wouldn't be in this state if you could just get with the program. And why couldn't you? Out of professional integrity. <laughs> Those techniques you mentioned are highly efficient, but it's not that I don't know about them. It's more like I couldn't care less. Get it? <laughs> okay, interesting response. What fun is it if the fight isn't fair? Fair? <laughs> you assume your opponents would fight fair in the first place. The odds are obviously not in your favor, so how are you just breezing by? But did that vast fool's words awaken something in you? Well, she gave me an answer that could turn everything. Upside down. <laughs> Everything? You mean it could make all the cards on the table just disappear? <laughs> That's cheating. If these leaves can be brought back. Would they bloom into new flowers? Oh, you're getting texts. And the is changing. us with two pieces of jewelry a necklace and a lucky charm there won't ever be a third piece uh, that's what you always say but you actually regret it don't you that you did it so you can zip it if there's nothing to talk about <laughs> i know you must remember what big sis told you you're a child blessed by Gyathra Triclops and can lead the clan to happiness. So always remember to protect yourself and never resent the pain and poverty you're going through. The words still ring in your ears, don't they? You're a good kid, so you definitely won't have forgotten. So, you surely won't forget how tragic her last moments of life how the piercing laughter behind you felt like it was drilling into your heart. You ran away without looking back, just as she told you to. Tisk, tisk. A lifelong regret, indeed. Enough! Do you not have anything better to talk about? down like a champ. Well, I guess when it comes to mind games, this isn't exactly your first rodeo. I think I finally get you. <laughs> Woo! You are nuts! We didn't actually get a bit tedious. In the end, I'll ruin this beautiful dream and create the grandest death. <laughs> well, you stuck to that from start to finish. Think about it. There's a Stellaron in play. The fabulous Robin loses her voice. Two unsolved murders. Cryptic messages from a masked fool. And a chance to go head to head with Sunday himself. The only thing to pique your interest is one word. The last word. A word that's right there at your fingertips. Actually, there's more than just two unsolved murders. <laughs> Curious to see just how capable 
capable you are. Still, you never answered my question. If you could start over, would you still want to be the child who received Gaiatha's blessing? Hmm. It's so quiet this time. Is he finally gone? Or am I the one about to disappear? Oh, this is where we came from. I need to go back in the room. So we actuated this one too. There's something over there. Okay, the question is, how do I shoot myself over there? Do I have to do it from here, maybe? Okay, yes I do. Secret party. Hey there. So, where's the... Ah, uh, there's the bird I made, right? Uh, 
Okay. Blockade. How much deeper does this go? Do I have to get him as Hanu now? Looks like it. Um, just do it real quick. I guess I have everything we found all done. I hope. Looks like this is all for our adventure. Just wanted to ask, were we here before? But uh, no, it doesn't look like it. Or was it fake in the still waters of oblivion? I can do this! I weep for the departed. It too shall fall. Another blood debt repaid. Stream forth, a gleam of old times. Just clearing that out. Stream four. Gleam of old flames. I can't do this. Forward. Get them. The 
dice have been cast. Bust? Or maybe I'll take it off. Watch your head. Sure, I'll play along. It's on me. Ill tidings manifest. Another journey begins. Destiny for oblivion. I weep for the departed. It too shall fall. Um. I really like how Recon's army looks so sweet. What do you want to know? <laughs> Free will, or was it fate? On the still waters of oblivion. Funny though. <sighs> this is what exploring the cosmos is all about. I guess so. <laughs> ah, it really is you. I don't know why, mister, but you always give me a special feeling. Be more curious about you. It's sad that I can't get to know you more. We have to say goodbye. Did you have fun? Mm, somewhat, I guess. Mm. You're going back? Yes. I should go home. The day's getting dark, and it's going to rain. I don't want to worry the others. Your home. Where is it? What a strange question. It's where Papa, Mama, and Big Sis are. In this dream. <sighs> Sad. This amusement park. This beautiful dream. They really are peaceful. Everyone loves it. But, mister, why don't you like it? <laughs> because they're not here. Where are they then? I don't know. Stay. Forever. We'll be with you forever in this dream. This is the greatest honor that we can offer to. 
to those who hurtle towards death. Hmm. Meine, äh, I can do it. meine Sing. He's just after Panacone. No matter the means, no matter the price. It's not personal. <laughs> It's hard, isn't it? Well, don't get soft on me now. <laughs> What, did you suddenly grow a conscience? <laughs> done can't be undone all we can do is play the cards we're dealt and rake in as much time as possible yes alas people won't make all the right choices in their lifetime so luck always seems like it's on your side you will keep winning having never lost before but why Maybe when I get to where I'm going and look back, I'll know what the trip was all about.
<laughs> Can you take a photo for me? I want a memento. Sure. Come on. Look at the lens when you're taking a photo the next time. Your expression will look more natural. Sure, I will. Then, mister, are you going back too? I can't leave yet. I still have a show to do. Oh, you're about to go on stage, aren't you? Let's go then. I'll take you to the stage. I'm <laughs> sure. So you're an actor. No wonder your clothes are so stylish. <laughs> I'm actually a... merchant. But I do have a show to do. Are you the same as those men in black in the sky? But you're not wearing green for. Only ordinary employees have to wear that. My position is much higher than theirs. <laughs> awesome. I hope I can become as good looking as you when I grow up. Those were really formidable foes. It just could one shot them. Of course, they're protecting a bird. Sure, I'll play along. Ah. Destiny isn't chosen. Ill fate to send. That's half the work. Destined for oblivion. I weep for the departed. It too shall fall. I'm scared. Straight put. Memories are ebb beneath the waters. Lies an endless abyss. Head your bets. Henry Richard isn't helping my car on, but okay. What do you want to know? Ill tidings manifest. Another journey begins. On the still waters of oblivion. How familiar. Watch your head. I can hold everyone back. Sure, uh -huh. Destiny. Uh -huh. Why is he repeating the same dialogue now? Hmm. It doesn't look like there's any hidden path this time around. Wait, I heard another bird. 
って。Thanks, Olga. Thank you. <laughs> you still seem pretty nervous. Let's put our palms together. If you receive Gaiathra's blessing, you'll feel more relaxed. Putting our palms together is a simple ritual. By putting our palms together and reciting the prayer to Mama Funga, she will bless us. If you're not familiar, I can guide you. It's all right. I know how to do it. <laughs> of course I know. This is where we go our own way, Kakabasha. The catechins are coming. Why? The catechins have already taken all our money, food, and they killed our parents. What more do they want? Catechins are bloodthirsty, cruel, and insatiably greedy. They want everything only to end up with nothing. Act of revenge, remember? Today is the day of the Kakava, and also your birthday. They know the Abjin will surely hold a festival today. With the aid of this rain, they will come to destroy our wagons and take everything they want. Little do the Catkins know, this time we will fight back. The men in black that descend from the skies are on our side. The catechins stand no chance against them, and will surely pay for their arrogance. Without this rain, the catechins would never take action, and we would not have the chance to turn the tide. This is a gift from Gayathra, and you are Kakavasha, whose good fortune will bless your sister with success. But... but people will die, and you will be in danger. How is that good fortune? Why are you all doing this? The Avgen always return their blood debts. Gayathra calls for me, while Papa and Mama are waiting for me. I must answer the call. And she will bless you with good fortune, and help you survive. As long as you are alive, the blood of the Avgen will never run dry. So run, Kakavasha. Do not be afraid, and do not look back. Go to the other side of the mountain. The rain will accompany you, and the rain will bless you. As for us, we will reunite in Kakava's next aurora. May the goddess Gayathra close her eyes three times. Keep your blood eternally pulsing. Let your journey be forever peaceful. And your schemes forever concealed. Farewell, Kakavasha. Newsflash from the Inter-Astral Peace broadcast. The IPC Marketing Development Department spokesperson confirms that a small-scale rebellion has broken out in the unclaimed region of Sigonia. The situation is now under control. The insurgents are from a local clan known as Kataka, which has a long history of disdain towards the IPC. 
This has caused a serious negative impact to the work of the IPC's marketing development department. Of course, the IPC was involved. A massive attack on the Abjin, who were under the protection of the IPC, resulting in 6,728 deaths and 3,452 missing. The casualties are currently under the care of the frontline trauma team. The spokesperson expresses his deepest condolences for this devastating humanitarian disaster. At the same time, delivering an important message on this matter to all interplanetary citizens. Finally, he proclaims, the hammer of preservation will fall on all beings, regardless of life or death, regardless of race, regardless of ideology to uphold the basic rights we inherently possess. Kakavasha? are in place it's time for the show to begin I'm curious how this is going to wrap up now this act is dedicated to you I hope it'll be an unforgettable memory for you Kakavisha By the way, before you go, I have a personal question. You... Do you truly want to destroy the world with your own hands? <sighs> Let's assume, just assuming now, that every time I roll the dice, there's a possibility of achieving this particular outcome then I would be quite happy to make that wager. And we are back to the trailblazer. <sighs> Is this Miss Acheron? Hello, I'm Inigo, the Astral Express's navigator. Hello, I'm March 7th. I'm sure he needs no introduction. As you definitely know him. Hello? None of you seem surprised by my arrival. Since Weld has decided to travel with you, it means that he trusts you. And we trust his judgment. <laughs> I envy your close friendships. Miss Acheron here doesn't present a danger, and she's of no threat to the Astral Express. Aventurine's prior accusation was based on nothing more than his own subjectivity. Which is why, before we continue working together, he has a duty to explain himself. You want to... create a situation where all three parties are present? There must be some deeper meaning behind Aventurine's actions. I suspect he's been aware of Penacone's secret from the beginning and has been continuously strategizing to unveil it. In that sense, the Astral Express's role in his plans would be imperative. In the worst case scenario, he may use us to do something unexpected. Assuming things do escalate to that stage, having an extra ally is a good insurance policy. Penacone has numerous factions, and the state of affairs is significantly more intricate than that of Bellabog and the Xianzhou. <laughs> I like this reference. <laughs> I really, 
like this reference for those who not know. Shiro MES Reality Marble slash Noble Phantasm. I am the bone of my sword. You're talking weird again. But it's a good vibe. No matter what, we can't ignore the safety of Penacony. To solve the mystery of the Watchmaker, it is crucial to get the IPC's intel. The path ahead is fraught with danger. But what's trailblazing without a little danger? Also, the proper name for his novel Phantasm Slash Reality Marvel is Unlimited Blade Works. But he has a chant, and it begins with um, the bone of my sword. Sounds like we've reached a consensus. Now, uh, Miss Acheron? I will accompany you, of course. Let's move out then! But where do we start looking for him? No need to rush. If he truly has laid a trap, he will definitely use every means to lure us in. There he goes. <laughs> Look. Should both the performers and spectators fail to arrive, won't all of Aventurine's plans be for nothing? Let's get going, everyone. The hour of trailblazing is upon us. Collected, claim your reward. Front of the train block, does he mean this? We are here. Oh, okay. Sit in the best seat and watch the grand finale. We are about to do that. And yes, I'm. Even though it's almost like 2 a.m., I'm still gonna like finish this up now. I've committed, and I'm gonna keep committing. Um, where was the VIP launch again, though? I would do it another time. To solve the mystery of the Watchmaker, it is crucial to get the IPC's intel. The path ahead is fraught with danger. But what's trailblazing without a little danger? True. Let's get going, everyone. The hour of trailblazing is upon us. <laughs> I envy your close friendship. You already said it. Oh, I have a bad feeling that something big's gonna go down. Uh, are you ready? I was born ready. Let's go. Let's waste no time and head to the theme park then.
Mr. Yang. Hmm? Why did you not tell your companions about my true identity? It's just like you said, uh, an inability rather than an unwillingness. Plus, it's a lot. I'm seeing a bird here. Yeah. Something that can be summed up in a few words. But I chose to believe you, and my trust in you stems more from my own personal judgment. I also believe that if it were their choice to make, they would make the same one. Thank you. I'm grateful. To reciprocate. In the upcoming confrontation, if the odds aren't in the Astral Express's favor, I will stand with you. If my meager strength is required. Your meager strength? Welcome, welcome to Tombstones. I heavily accept that challenge. Physic, uh, ice, and lightning. Yeah, I think it will be fine. So, one thing I want to do, I want to... Hmm. I don't have an ice related heater, do I? Nope. I think Roger would fit us better. We're back here again. Adventuring actually chose a really conspicuous location. Oh, that guy's really taking it to a whole new level. Does he really think he's a superstar or something? Not a soul in sight. The hounds drove out the visitors, and now their whereabouts are unknown too. Everyone, pay attention. The other party has obviously come prepared. I think this will be just a straight shot. Yep. I really like the music. your appointment, Mr. Aventurine. It is customary to show yourself as well. <laughs> well I will, naturally. But before that, I've got to introduce our guest of honor. Everyone, give it up for Mr. Celeron! Let me remind you that in all likelihood, this stage and his identity have nothing to do with the wanted murderer. Oh no, they do. <laughs> of course they do. Otherwise, why would I work so hard to gain your trust and then invite you all here? Because he's the only one who saw all three homicides. He is the key to prove 
proving that the family's death that does not exist in Drain's promise is nothing but a sham. Three homicides? That's right, madam. The third one is about to happen right now, right here, in Clock Studios theme park. A truly grand death. You, 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 and you. All of you are going to die. And it's all because of Mr. Stellar. You will become the personification of death. <laughs> oh, don't underestimate the preservation. The cornerstone of the Amber Lord will surely guide me. Let me be a little clearer. I will detonate the Stellaron in you and cause a teeny tiny accident on Panacone. No, very tiny. Bam! The entire theme park will be reduced to a shattered dream. Then, before the family can even react, I'll become the IPC Fleet's navigator. Your bluff isn't fooling anyone. If you could really do that, you would have done so earlier. You want to bet? <laughs> sure. I'll bet with you. I'm betting that it'll be a sweeping victory for me. By detonating an unprecedented explosion to prove that the vow of harmony is a complete and utter joke. You won't do it. Of course I can. It's just another gamble. I came from the wastelands of Sigonia. For just 60 red copper coins, people paid to brand me. Put me in chains. Place me in the gallows and bury me in the golden sands. But the sun could not kill me, and the quicksand sent me back to the embrace of the guild and the IPC. Bear in mind, my victory wasn't just a stroke of luck. No. I've never been defeated. Have you ever heard the saying, sleep is the rehearsal of death? Why do the living sleep? Oh, because we are not ready for the final rest. Every night is practice for the end. You and I are escaping into our dreams for fear of death at this very moment. And death will serve us in our dreams. What a now. Friends, the game has commenced, and you cannot choose to decline. Can be already deep in it. Divinity. Eternal slip. The dead return! Ill tidings manifest. 
Another journey begins. Stand still. Wait, what? Don't worry. It's just a scream. I weep for the departed. It did shall fall. What was that about? Good times never last. Time to say bye. Boom. Memories are beneath the water lies an endless abyss. <laughs> what do you want? Uh, relax. Dustin for oblivion. <laughs> Prepare for some. <laughs> Okay, now I understand the mechanic going on here. Stand still. I weep for the departed. It too shall fall. Good times. No time to say bye. Boom. That's half the work. Still waters of oblivion. Eternal slip. The dead return! Say bye to breathing. Receive divinity. Destiny's hand Repent. has truly blessed me. Uh, relax. Free will, or was it destined for oblivion? You chose the wrong. <laughs> Another journey begins. Still waters of a blip. I'll see you off. This is mean mechanics. Good times never last. Time to say bye. Boom. 
I weep for the departed. It too shall fall. Memories are ever beneath the waters lies an endless abyss. What do you want to know? <laughs> Stand still. Destined for oblivion. Prepare for some. Eternal sleep. The dead return! Ill fate descend! Free will, or was it fate? Still waters of oblivion. Receive divinity. Repay. Chose the wrong enemy. Stand still. Eternal sleep. The dead return. Destiny isn't chosen. Ill tidings manifest. Free will, or was it fate? Destined for oblivion. I weep for the departed. It too shall fall. Eternal sleep. The dead return! Good times. Time to say bye. Boom. Memories are ever beneath the waters. Lies an endless abyss. Everybody's like that. Down to the last player. So why can't I be happy Why can't I feel that breeze? What's happening now? Ah, cutscene. Always hide your ace with a straight face. I'm starting to get a little impatient with you all. <laughs> Friends, to fully relish this, I'm betting every last ship. Only by casting aside reason does one truly can I might pass through the place you mentioned. Pinnacle. What do you hope to find within a dream? I'm not looking for anything. They aren't in a dream. Mm. I'm afraid the family will not open the doors for you. Why? Because the path you walk is not accepted by the harmony. Even if that's not what I want. Precisely because it's not what you want. Because they are not like other eons. They have never glanced at anyone. 
than they ever need to. They leave woven strands of fate for humans to walk, and together, they weave a great shadow. And this shadow silently envelops them. There are always those who rise from the shadows. <laughs> they mostly become a part of the shadow. In your eyes, am I the same? You still have a strand of color, but not much. That is enough. Before they vanish completely, I will reach the Nihility's end. to mourn the departed, weeping like rain, to swell the crossing stream. As the tide arrives, leading you back home. That looked really cool. But what is this place? Uh, a gigantic black hole. And see, uh, have I, have I succeeded? Horizon of Existence? This looks eerily similar to... Uh, to what actually happened uh, to Kuchen Fanality. Your good luck is the most precious wealth we all Abjin have. You came out alive after two days. It proves that you are the real deal. Wealth, status, power. The IPC will give you whatever you want. As for us, we will reunite in Kakava's next Aurora. It's a pity this is not the place you were expecting. Nility, is it? Perhaps to you, I am just an emanator who's hiding her identity. But the sleeping and shapeless never glance at anyone. They have no face, no form, and even less of a will to speak. The Nihility envelops everyone equally. Only some who have gone under their shadow can go farther, tainting themselves with more Nihility. That's all. <laughs> That's all. My friend, you really leave me at a loss for words. So... Is this my final destination? The land of the dead? This is all but a fleeting dream. One of the thousands of manifestations of Ix. Under the watchful eye of Nihility, we momentarily linger here before moving on to our own paths. 
It seems that my death has already been determined. Even if you wish for it, I can't promise you anything. Now that you've accomplished your goal, I think you can be a little more forthcoming. <laughs> what do you mean? Your performance at the theme park was wonderful and grandiose. A simple yet practical technique that fooled almost everyone. No one would have ever thought that you would have gone to such lengths. Even staking your life just to prove a fact that had seemingly been disproved long ago. Real death does not exist in Penacone's dreamscape. <laughs> Why would I do this? Because this is the only way you can uncover a secret that is even more unspeakable than the serial murders. To use this dream death to get there. To that promised land people constantly seek in this grand gathering. Penacone. The legacy of the Watchmaker. The true land of exile. <sighs> How did you find out? I never imagined that something I learned about unexpectedly would become the key to connecting everything. It's our Stellaron friend's identity, isn't it? I see you're in the know. Let's just say I'd put money on the possibility. The murder isn't nearly enough to disrupt business as usual. Even if there were one or two murders on Penacone, most people wouldn't be personally affected. And that won't create any waves. This dream of theirs isn't a boundless sea. It's a lonely island. The family used the Harmony to build a high wall and isolate them from the vast and treacherous ocean of the outside world. That barrier they build keeps death out. But it also keeps the secrets that are lost in that watery abyss from floating to the surface. A beautiful dream, free of suffering. Who would want to go fishing for those secrets? No one. Unless... Unless someone goes to the other side of the barrier... ...and lives to tell the tale. Someone already has. I got the idea early on, chewing on that masked fool's little hint. If a mute isn't someone who cannot make a sound, then it has to be someone who cannot speak. Someone who survived the treacherous depths, but is unable to take the stage and speak the truth. <laughs> well, I'm happy to know she's safe and sound, and still on Penacone. Hint. Is that not proof? Well, proof is the one thing I don't have. The only thing that can prove these... ...conjectures... ...is for the family to come clean. And with the way they buttered up these outsiders... ...it seems pretty clear they're intent on covering their tracks. But you don't need proof to have a suspicion. And for me, suspicion is enough. I didn't need to find the memories on meme. I just needed for someone to kill me like it killed that silver-haired girl. You don't sound very confident to me. Going out of your way to make citywide broadcasts in an attempt to involve more people. <laughs> you are simply betting on the possibility of someone being able to break down the barrier. You're very lucky that fate has decided to let us cross paths. I happen to be equipped with a very sharp blade. Sharp enough to slice through the veil of dreams. I can also carve the Harmony's brand off of you. You possess great cunning. Deliberately setting us up to be on opposing sides. Constantly repeating the words of the Emanator in front of others. Leaving me no choice but to draw my blade against you. And that's how you win. Opportunity and strategy. Both are essential. And in your plans, the IPC always wins. Even if you lose the bet. To the family, the life of an ambassador is still invaluable. Well, it's a huge gamble, isn't it? But allow me to point out a mistake. 
The IPC's success is not guaranteed. I, unfortunately, have no contingencies for such an important matter. Detonating a Stellaron. I can't do it. The Aventurine Stone is too broken to even safeguard my escape from the stage. If, at the end of the day, you did not unsheath your blade, I would have lost the bet. It is pointless to discuss what-ifs. You have won. Your prize is an entry ticket into that deep sea. And after this, whether you can return from the Abyss is another gamble of yours. Have you never wavered? Wavered? <laughs> of course I have. But I can only bank on my own good fortune. Because other than that... I have nothing. Hmm. Wake up from this dream and go to where you should be. Your gamble is not over yet. Before we part, can you answer one more question? As someone who has traveled on that road, can you tell me, why are we born into this world, if it's just to die? I don't think this, and never have, nor do you. But the nihility envelops you and I. And everyone. And because of that, it's pointless. But it is still there. If the dice of fate are always weighted, then that is our destiny. Why, then, do we struggle against it? My answer might not be able to resolve your confusion, because it has been with you throughout your journey and is already a part of your life. But you said, sleep is the rehearsal of death. So why does life sleep? Because we are not ready to welcome death. So you can definitely understand why we want to be prepared. Even if the ending has been predetermined, that's fine. There are countless things that humans cannot change. But before the end, there are many things that humans can do while on their journey. And because of this, the end will thus reveal a completely different meaning. Take a good look at your pocket. Your friend has already given you the answer. Good luck. Doctor's advice. The impossible in a dreamscape is not death, but rather dormancy. Do stay alive. I wish you the best of luck. <laughs> then I shall get going. Mister? You're leaving? You ultimately chose to leave this dreamscape? Yes. Because they are not here. My papa, mama, and big sis. Then where are they? They are in a place where everyone will go. A very, very distant place. Then are you going to? I'll get there one day. But not now. There will come a day when the sky will drizzle, and I will hear the call of Gyathra Triclops, and know that it is time for me to go, and be reunited with my family. So, until that time comes, I should be preparing. 
Preparing for what? Well, preparing to face them, Kakamasha. And to make them proud. Mm. I know you'll be able to do it. Good luck. <laughs> well, of course. For I am a child who received the blessing of Gyathra Triclops. Yet. <laughs> But you still seem nervous. Do you really keep hammering, does it, eh? <laughs> well, I seem that way because I am nervous. You know what? Maybe you can help. What do you say? One last time? Put our palms together? Are you going now? Yes. May the Mother Goddess thrice close her eyes for you, keeping your, your blood, blood eternally pulsing. pulsing. May, May your journey, journey be forever, forever peaceful, and your schemes forever concealed. concealed. Our paths will cross again beneath Kakava's shimmering auroras. Farewell, Kakavasha. With hope for the morrow nestled in my heart, I descend into the slumber of two night. Until the denouement of all coming morrows kisses me, I have then embraced the quiet death. But this man is different. He lives and breathes in the present, in every sinking night. But every daring gamble, no vision of morrow ever graced his dreams. As life knows no quietude, his fate yet demands him to win them all, to river tempests one after another, to mire and shrouds his weary breath. And now in the unfathomable depths of dream, the once falling die has at last landed on its earthly rest. Quietly, peacefully, it at last landed. The light of the Aventurine Stone has disappeared. This only represents one outcome. He kept his promise and got what he wanted. As planned, your cornerstone has been successfully sent to the family's territory. Then... Let's fulfill our duty and start harvesting. Thereafter, in the crater of slumberers, deep within the sweet dream of the planet of festivities, another stone begins to radiate light. I come for an audience. I come to fill wine. And I come to claim. I bestow poison in the guise of sweet dew. Come the toil of spring and yield of fall. I patiently wait for the branches to be heavy with withered fruits. All for the Amber Lord. Meanwhile, the memory is so death. You try to open your eyes, but find only blackness before it, before you. <laughs> and whose free wheel is this? <laughs> Come on, game. Memories gradually resurface as time rewinds to a few minutes. Eventually, it releases the final assault, bringing down a dusting shower of chips, followed closely by Acheron drawing her blade, and then crash. The indescribable force severs the power of preservation, while time and space froze instantly. Your thoughts twist to the knot as your senses fail, with only gravity tearing at your mind as you plummet into the boundless darkness, until a fire engulfs you in its embrace. 
Yes, I'm telling them. You're awake. I've been waiting on you for quite a while. I didn't do anything but wait for you to wake up. You've met me before. I'm Sam, a Stellaron hunter. I originally planned on showing up earlier to reveal some truths to you. And why did you do not do it? But I encountered more roadblocks than expected. Eleven times I've tried, but ended in failure. Before I knew it, this world and I became too intertwined, and it became too difficult to escape the constraints of the script. Ah. Elio is right. In this land of the dreams, you and I will reap unforgettable gains. I don't know people's hearts as well as he and Kafka do. Nor do I have a specialty like Silverwolf and Blade. Most of the things that I'm good at only apply to villains who need no mercy. So, there is only one method that I use. This is to show you. All that I am. <sighs> Labyrinth like corridors and halls, traps everywhere. The owner of this mansion must be a bit paranoid. Firefly has been a stellar on hunter all along. Interesting. <laughs> you are so funny, Mr. Security Officer. I hope that sense of humor of yours has helped you find the serial killer. Just expressing a personal opinion. Why? Did I hit a nerve? Mr. Gallagher, my patience is wearing thin. Neglecting duties will only make me more suspicious that you and the real serial killer are connected. <sighs> Scoundrel, punk, drunk, hooligan. I have heard this trash talk all too often. But I have never once thought that I'd be treated as an accomplice to a murderer. I, I take back what I said. Your problem is paranoia. You're just crazy, you know? Lunatic! You, the family, you broke my spine and pulled out my fangs, and now you want to accuse me of murder? Ridiculous. Only idiots who've drunk too much soul glad will berate a stray dog in the streets. What exactly is making you say all this nonsense? You should be more concerned about the outworld visitors who are making a scene in the theme park than me. I don't need you to remind me. Once that ambassador walks through the doors of the mansion, I will know what he wants. My servants see everything. His little magic tricks may have fooled me, but no matter, I'm happy to see how it's turned out. Why do you think that I just let him go? And why do you think I emptied the theme park stage? Because my target from the beginning has always been you, Hound. The more noise he makes, the more opportunities I have to make you and your true master pay in blood. If I were really the murderer, why would you need to be so secretive? Ha! Huh, I forgot. You also have a difficult master to serve, telling you to ignore the murder case and focus solely on that Charmony festival. Isn't that right, my brother? <sighs> Looks like your disguise has helped you successfully understand every facet of the family. Disguise? You must be blind to be accusing me of being a fake. 
Open your eyes and take a good look. <sighs> Indeed, every part of you is real. The brown hair, soft and curly like Benny's. The orange eyes, which make me miss the gaze of Sir Whitaker. That odd scar, the mark of Wolsey. And the gray vest, tie, hound emblem, bottle, the bartending, and your role as a security officer. These are all true traits. Uh, now I understand the list of suspects and why they were in. <laughs> from all 52 loyal family members. When they are gathered, countless tiny truths are woven together into a lie. You collected a small piece of each of them and claimed them for yourself. Then you invented this facade, a complete Gallagher. And that's why also the one Bloodhound was saying like, who do you mean, Gallagher? I don't know a Gallagher. Now we know why. Tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> Minion of the Enigma, huh? <laughs> Not sure why this wasn't said. You have guts, I'll give you that. Not bad. I severely underestimated you. Admirable. But so what? Can this prove that I murdered your sister and that stowaway? This proves that you and the memory zone mean death are linked. And that's enough. Listen up. I don't care how you did it. I only care about one thing. The answer to a question. Despicable dog! Why did you kill her? <laughs> you know, in the thick of things, people are blind to the grit in their eyes. Yet they can always feel it scratch. Want the answer? I'll give it to you. <laughs> The whole thing is just fate playing a cruel joke on us. Okay. And we can like her flames from afar. Really interesting. Missions? Okay. Mm, Cyclist mission. Yeah, I would just care about the messages right now. Because it's almost three. <laughs> and I'm getting a bit tired. But I'm really happy that we did like got through the story purpose distraction whenever the uh, most commutative HP loss during attack these when you fail with the max HP of the amount of damage because of because uh, the, at the same time increase the damage they do for okay interesting mm. Well, yeah. I will I'll take the opportunity to end the stream here. <laughs> Story? Really interesting. It was quite confusing through the midway part. And quite an unexpected ending. Probably Sunday just got killed as well. Eventually is somewhere right now, somewhere between alive and death, and 
I don't really sure how to explain this. Gekron apparently is, is not an eliminator after all. She's just like really powerful on the ability path. Understandably, if she is like uh, still has like the origin as uh, like origins as the her of origin, yeah. <laughs> but there's like a lot of fruit to chew on actually, even with the ending and. I don't know what to expect for like the next update in terms of story. Because it's clear we are still not done with the Panicone story. Fifana, we are not done with it yet. And yeah. Gallagher also turning out to be quite a curious character. With all that being said, it just hopes once on the lines I can easily raid someone. Okay. It's just a look at the from Mercury, it's just a uh, what's playing. Then. For any reason, she was on the stream earlier. Let's give Chef the Kaiser more love. Yeah. Why is there not? Twitch is being weird right now again. Got it. <sighs> I hope you enjoyed it. I definitely enjoyed the story. Um, we'll s still have to be thinking about to like probably understand what was actually going on right now. Um. And I will just do the wrap up real quick. I'm getting really tired. <laughs> it's almost really a wrap, as I already said. I hope you enjoyed it. Be nice in the raid. And I'll hopefully see you all next time. Until then, and bye bye.